Yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. Derek Jeter's been having, obviously, issues with the ankles. So he saw Dr. Anderson today back in Charlotte, who was the operating physician and obviously the lead physician on on this. And uh, they did a new CT scan, which revealed a small crack in the area of, uh, of the previous injury. So we have to back off and let that heal. Um, we're now, this is obviously a setback. We're looking at, uh, you know, in terms of speculating on when, you know, we might see Derek back with us. He'd be looking at some time after the All-Star break. Well, there is no way to look at that as good news. Yankees have won seven out of eight, but bad news today from Brian Cashman. Welcome to Yankee Baseball, everybody, along with Ken Singleton and Al Leiter. I'm Michael Kay. So the Yankees know they will not have their all-star shortstop, their future Hall of Famer, the guy who's on the Mount Rushmore of Yankees until at least the all-star break. Kenny, can they survive it? Unfortunately, uh, Michael, they're going to have to try and do so. The fact is that uh, Derek Jeter is not coming back until after the All-Star break. At least now they know the reason why. He was only able to progress so far while he was out uh, trying to rehab, and all of a sudden he couldn't stay on the field anymore. He went to see the operating doctor, found another small crack, and the Yankees are going to have to go with Eduardo Nunez and uh, Jason Nix at shortstop. Now he's 38 years old, and June he turns 39. So, Al, you're not shocked by this kind of news. No. You know what? I think if you're Brian Cashman, the Yankees, you have to say, okay, look, we have a 38-year-old. You set it up beautifully, one of the greatest Yankee players, one of the greatest players in history, but he is a 38-year-old man playing a skill position and all of the range issues. So I would think as an organization you thought about the worst and the best scenario. I think the surprise is, is Derek Jeter. I mean, here's a guy that played in through pain. Will tell anybody I'm fine. When I'm on the field, I'm 100%. So, yes, it's a setback. I think, you know, after the Yankees going 1-4, and four, and now they flipped it around 7-1, and one, they're going to deal with what they have right now. And right now, they're happy with what they have. All right, so they have a baseball game to play today. And let's take a look at the New York Lottery pitching matchup. Patrick Corbin is going to go for the Diamondbacks 2-0 and with a 1.50 ERA. And Phil Hughes for the Yankees 0-2, 10.29. And... Al, he simply has not been good. No, he hasn't. You know, I think Phil Hughes, it gets frustrating when you watch Phil because when he's on, he's as good as anybody. But watch here. I just want to show location-wise. Yes, it's about fastball command. Torrey Hunter, middle of the plate. You see where Savelli wanted that ball away. It's middle of the plate. He's not throwing 95-plus. Again, Nick Marquez of the Orioles. You got Cervelli setting up away. Nitro zone, down and in. He's missing by 10, 12, sometimes 14 inches. This is a little bit different, Nolan Rimo. But again, wanting a fastball away. And I want it to show the, the fastball command issue. When he's on, like any pitcher, good fastball command, and he's got a put-away curveball that's as good as anybody. But when he's missing, it's games like that. Three innings is not acceptable. Well, the Yankees want him to turn it around, and they'd like to have a sweep for the Diamondbacks. Brett Gardner's been doing very well yesterday. A big part of the win. We'll hear from Gardner next when we return on Yes.
This team red hot right now, winners of seven out of your last eight. What's been the biggest difference during that span? You know, we started off a little slow, but I think when we were in Cleveland and uh, Robinson Cano got, it seemed like, nine or ten hits over the course of two days, really got us going and, and kind of woke everybody else up. And the middle of our lineup has been playing really well. They've been swinging the bats well and getting on base and um, driving guys in. You came up in a big spot in the seventh inning last night. How much do you enjoy coming up in those op with those opportunities, and what was your approach to that at bat? Well, I think everybody enjoys coming up in those opportunities and getting chances to, um, you know, maybe tie the game, take the lead. And, um, you know, my approach was just to try and get a good pitch to hit, and I was I was down in the count 2-2, and I never really had a good pitch to hit. The first two strikes he threw me were pretty good pitches, and, um, you know, just laid off those and then got a good fastball to hit and, and stayed with it the other way. And, and thank goodness Nooney was on second base and he had a pretty good secondary and made it home pretty quick. There had been a lot of talk prior to the season that this team wasn't going to score a lot of runs. However, that hasn't been the case. Any element of surprise on your end that you guys have been able to put out the offense that you have? No, I don't think anybody's surprised. I mean, I, th I think we're capable of getting better. And um, the more we play together, the more we get to know each other. And and some other guys get going, and um, I'd like to get on base a little more at the top of the lineup. When Robbie's swinging the bat the way he is, all i got to do is get on base, and it seems like he's going to get me in. So, um, you know, guys have been doing a good job. We've been getting some, some good performances out of our starting pitchers and um, really haven't had to use our bullpen a whole lot, it doesn't seem like. So, um, so far, so good, and hopefully we can keep it rolling into this weekend. Brad, thanks for the time, and best of luck tonight. Thank you. Michael K., Al Leiter, and Ken Singleton coming up after this right here on Yes. Hara will dig in. Phil Hughes is on the mound and he's ready. And let's do it here in the Bronx. First pitch is outside and we are underway. Get you set up with the lineups and the scouting reports as we move along here in the top of the first. There's a strike oh! to Parra, one and one. Big up Phil Hughes, 26 year old right hander, making his third start. High ERA, not very good. And you see the 17 hits is seven innings. It's got to be better than that. The 1-1 one, one. outside. Let's take a look at the pitcher scouting report brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. Bad Aprils. Phil Hughes, 20 career starts. And I'll tell you right after this pitch here, ERA in the sevens. What, it's in what? Sevens. High fly ball, left field. Vernon Wells is there. And there's one away. Let's take a look at that. Try and hunt the dealer scout report. Bad April's 20 career starts. Ken Singleton 4 and 11 with a 7 3. Does not like April's. No swing and miss. Only one of his 60 pitches he threw in his last start was a swing and miss. At top of the heap, how about this? 52 career wins as a Yankee. The most victories of a player that was selected by the Yankees in the, in the first player draft. He was a first rounder. So he's uh, the career wins list 52 wins. Here is Martin Prado. Pitches upstairs. Here's the guy who doesn't swing and miss very often. Does swings and misses. 95 percent of the time this year, he's put the ball, he's hit the ball, put it in play, or fouled it off. Just doesn't swing and miss. Oh! 
Yeah. You were talking about use his record. If you go boil it down to wins and losses, he's four and eleven in his career in April, which isn't very good. That's not his month. The rest of the year during his career, he's forty-eight and twenty-seven. So he's won oh. twenty games over five hundred for all the other months combined. What I'm noticing here early is he's throwing 93 94 with his fastball. And when you're at 94, you can make location mistakes every now and then. But not as consistently as he has been uh, so far this season. Fly ball right field. Ichiro is there for the second up. Why don't we take a look at the Diamondbacks starting lineup? We've already seen Gerardo Parra. He's the center fielder. He leads off. Martin Prado at third. That second. Paul Goldschmidt at first will at third. Cleaning up the catcher, Miguel Montero. Cody Ross in right field, bat fifth. Batting sixth to DHing Eric Chavez. AJ Pollock in left field will bat seventh. DD Gregorius his major league debut. The shortstop will bat eighth and batting ninth to playing second base. Cliff Pennington. Here is Goldschmidt. 94 mile an hour fastball, low, 1 0. Oh. No, that's a good point, Michael. But you know what happens with a guy like Phil Hughes and there's no question that that's a more than enough fastball. But when you get a little careless, and as I showed in the open, and you miss with your fastball and you like it, oh. you know, guys, guys can square it up. They barrel it up, and that's the result of last year was an example. 35 home runs he gave up. You, know, you keep it in the ballpark, and you take two or three singles, and miss miss out over the plate up, and it's a big fly. Oh. Down one and two. You know we saw in that first game with Paul Goldschmidt. What kind of power he possessed going the other way? I said first game. It was yesterday, last night's game against CC in the first inning. Got a two run homer in opposite field. He's off to a pretty good start. He's two for eight in this series, but he's reached safely in every game so far this year. Punched out over the head of Euclid and into right field for base hit. And that's still true. Now 15 games in a row, he's reached base safely. So Goldschmidt with a two-out single. Let's look at the game time. Weather presented by Bigelow T. 56 degrees, 70% humidity. The wind is 12 miles per hour, and it's cloudy with a slight chance of showers. It rained this afternoon. They had the tarp on, but uh, has stopped at the moment. So we're playing baseball. Did you see the Mets today? First pitch temperature in Colorado was 28 degrees. And since they started keeping track of first pitch temperature, it's the coldest major league game uh, since 1991. And it beat your game oh. that you talked about yesterday. Yours was 29 degrees. Was it? The Marlins and the Cubs. Yeah, opening day. 97, right? Uh, if, uh, you know what? They could say 29. It felt like about minus 9. Was that Ch Miami? Or? No. <laughs> <laughs> Chicago, Wrigley, windy. It was freezing. Toss it. I was, I was thinking about the rest of the country. Yeah. It was 29 in Miami. <laughs> 29 degrees. You know, now that Montreal's out of the league, well, they have they have a covered stadium, but Jerry Park was not covered. There's some cold nights there. Count 0 and 2 on Montero. You've got Goldschmidt over at first base, and we mentioned the during the, these first two games that the Diamondbacks haven't been really stealing that many bases. But Goldschmidt last year stole 18 bases in 21 attempts. So maybe you know he's one of these players that if you don't watch him closely, he'll pick his spot, especially with two outs, they take off. Now the count's 0 2. He probably won't be going here. Breaking ball outside. Yeah, you know, just watching that hit that he just hit went to right field on a curveball off of Phil Hughes. This is a middle of the lineup guy and Paul Goldschmidt. You know, last night right field off a CC home run. I mean this guy's a 25 home run. You said 18 stolen bases. And he's to me the way he's used in line to line he's a 300 hitter. Or can be. Still one and two.
there. We don't see the Diamondbacks all that often, but uh, these first two games, he's been one of the players that's impressed me, along with the AJ Pollock. Para just a, a true pro yeah. hitter, contact guy, 300 hitter, good defensive player. The one two slice foul. You know, I think it's fair to say it, we've said it with Kirk Gibson, the manager of the D backs. It, there's a, a similar adjectives for these guys gritty, hard nosed, fundamentally sound players that get after it. And I, I think that's what they've assembled. Kevin Towers, the general manager, Kirk Gibson played that way. Right now, they find themselves two games behind the front running Colorado Rockies in the National League West. Right back to Phil Hughes. And that'll do it. A scoreless first inning. No runs to hit. No errors in. One man left on base. Down the back, nothing. And the New York Yankees coming to bat. One difference. Brett Gardner in center field will lead off. Batting second, playing left field, Vernon Wells. Robinson Cano, the second baseman. It's third. Cleaning up, first baseman, Kevin Euclid. The DH, Ben Francisco, bats fifth, batting sixth. And catching Francisco Cervelli. Here's a change. Yesterday was boss. Today it's Ichiro in right field. Eduardo Nunez, a shortstop, will bat eighth and batting ninth. And playing third base, Jason Nix. On the mound, Patrick Corbin, the young left hander. They like this guy a lot. Got him in the Danny Heron trade. And he's uh, earned the job. He came in competing for the fifth spot. Look at those numbers the 1.5 ERA. He outdueled Clayton Kershaw a couple starts ago. This young man's got a nice upside to his future. Let's take a look at the pitcher scatter report right by Tron at Tri Honda Dealers. New York state of mind. He was a Yankee fan. His family are Yankee fans. And he said 2001, truthfully, I didn't even know what a Diamondback was when they beat the Yanks. Fastball slider changeup anywhere from 89 to 94. Nice slider. He's using his changeup more. And Q's basketball. He actually wanted to be and thought he was going to be a basketball player. Can dunk a basketball. Was at many Jim Bayheim, the Q's basketball coach's camps. Eventually moved to Florida, and here he is in the big leagues. Yeah, originally from uh, Clay, New York, which is just north of Syracuse, right? Right alongside almost of uh, Oneida Lake, which is the largest lake in the state. It's entirely within the state. Here's Brett Gardner. I got it. So Lake Ontario. Oh! Yeah, exactly. Those, those other ones, not entirely within the New York State. So Jimmy Beheim didn't offer him a scholarship? Is that what it uh, is? You know what? Eventually he moved down to Florida and went to Chipola Juco down in Florida and started to pitch. But he thought he was going to. You know, he, he wanted to be a basketball player. Well, he throw 90. They're going to take a look at it, especially if you're left-handed, right, Al? Yes. Didn't know what a diamond back was. <laughs> you ever look at your left arm, Al, and say thank you? Oh yeah. You know, <laughs> actually, I, I I put the uh, cutter, you know, like I'm throwing a cutter. Say thank you, guy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because I wasn't dunking any basketballs. <laughs> <laughs> the one, two. Two and two. And that breaking ball had to that slur type action. Yeah. Yeah. He calls it a slider, but you're right, Kenny. It's in between both and therefore slurve. 
not quite a curve and not a slider. Strike three. Gardner down up here. A tough pitch for any left hander. You can see the, the way Corbett delivers this right to Montero's glove. Montero could have been blindfolded. All strike three. Okay, see Montero pull the glove back a little bit. Just a little. Little sidewinder. Now, you know, where that's coming out of Corbin's release point, it's cutting across the plate a little bit. May have been outside smidge, but too close to take. Here's Vernon Wells. Three home run for Wells so far this year. Oh! There's a strike. Got off to a real nice start. Mid spring training pickup by the Yanks. Count on two. Corbin hit one corner and then the other. And it jumps ahead of Wells 0 2. And that really puts a crimp in a hitter style. Where's he going next? I'm bouncing something. Slider. Nope. Good stand up pitch. By stand up, you mean you move them off the plate, back them up a little bit, I'll try to open up the outside corner. Up and down away, right here, up and in, down away. 94. He throws harder than Miley did last night. I wonder if that's going to distract Patrick. Or his family. <laughs> <laughs> Making the trek down from Clay, New York. That's in left field here at the stadium. Off speed and Vernon Wells way out in front. Two strikeouts for Corbin. Let's check out the defense behind Corbin. So far, he's only needed Montero. Montero behind the plate. In the outfield is Pollock, Parra, and Ross left to right. Infield will go from third to first. Prado, Gregorius. We're interested to see his uh, his skill set. Pennington and Goldschmidt and Montero and Corbin the battery. Here's Robinson Cano. You know, watching Patrick Corbin early on, last night Wade Miley, the young left-hander, did a nice job just at the end of the game. Wasn't able to hold it there in the seventh inning. Yankees come back and snatch a win. But similar, he's attacking the zone. Throw a lot of strikes. Working fairly quickly, too, just to... Uh, Got to slow him down. Step out a bit. Maybe foul a few pitches off. Cano just did. is on deck. Cano has struggled against lefties this year. And in his career, he's hit lefties pretty well. He's one for 16, and last year he struggled as well against lefties. But he works a walk against the young left-hander Corbin to reach first. Yeah, no contact in two strikeouts and a walk here. And then give you a chance. Talking about Vernon Wells' contribution, you look at the pickups that Brian Cashman and the Yankees made so far, Michael. It's been glaring. Excellent move. Nicholas has done a nice job. Vernon Wells, you mentioned, these three home runs. Travis Hafner, four. Well, it started with this when uh, A Rod went down with the hip problem. The Yankees aggressively went after Euclid. And they got him in the fold, and that was a real good backup third baseman for A Rod. And then as people started to go down, they quickly made moves, the whole organization. And they, they paid off. They really paid off.
The 1-1. One, 2-1. One. One. You know, you think of Euclid, I do, all those years with the Red Sox and White Sox last year. Just a gritty grinder type player. Hard nose, see him throw the helmet, fired up, cares a lot. You know, personality wise, he gets it. Obviously, Boston, you know, big media market. Damn it. Not happy with himself on that pitch where he chased one out of the zone. But you're right, Al. He likes to grind out at bats, get ahead on counts, pick his pitch, he gets it, doesn't want to miss it. Put it in play with authority. And what? In Boston, maybe your approach is a little different than here at the Yankee Stadium. I mean, you got the short porch in right field here, and of course you have the monster in Fenway. Maybe you're looking to pull the ball more up up at Boston. Hit sharply to short, Gregorius to second, and that will do it. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on base. We're going to the second. Cody Ross will lead it off. By Jeep. Visit Jeep.com to learn more. By Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. Call 1 800 Direct TV. And by the Kia Optima Limited Midside Sedan. Elegance, performance, technology. She is into it. Second inning, no score. Got a teddy bear working. All good. Deck down and that's a pick. Mom and dad probably have a broom somewhere under their seat. <laughs> Why? Because he he's, might sweep the Diamondbacks? Well, they won two in a row. Isn't that what fans do? You won two in a row, you got a chance to sweep. Come on, Michael. Is it your first rodeo? By the way, we're sending off bad vibes. We are? Yeah, I, I got a couple of tweets last night. Why do you hate Al Leiter's guts? Oh, gosh. I mean, I don't like him, but I don't think it comes across on TV. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go again. Kenny, don't we like each other? You and Al? Yeah. Oh. Well, you and I yeah, love yeah, each yeah. other. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got three more games to test it in Toronto. <laughs> How long have we known each other? Uh, when did you come up to the big leagues? All right, so it's like 25 years, and I'm like that annoying little brother, and it comes across. Fly ball, right field coming on is Ichiro. One away. Now, do you remember the first day that you guys met? Yeah, I do. Yeah? I do. You See, said, that's not for real. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I said, this is one strange little puppy. <laughs> and was I, I was right? warming up. <laughs> yeah, it was warming up. I was in the Fister in Milwaukee, and he was doing the... I was, I was doing a story on him for the Post. What are you warming up in the... He was warming up in front of the mirror. The, yeah. Yeah. Were you throwing strikes out? Well, I was going through it, and I was showing what Ron Guidry had showed me on the slider, uh -huh. and then what Rigetti showed. And I was going through the whole delivery thing. He did, thought I was a whack job. Did you ever come up with a Guidry slider? Um, no, I wish. Yeah, you know, Guidry. A lot of people rags, wish they had that slider. Right here. And then it became a cutter. 
So we saw Michael. That was a little wacky. And that was in the New York Post then. That's right. Michael Post. Daily News. Count two and one on Chavez. Two and two. And talked to Eric Chavez the other day. Of course, uh, Yankee fans know he did a fine job with the Yankees the last couple of years, but had a chance to sign with the Diamondbacks. He lives in the uh, Phoenix area. He says it's nice when spring training is like eight minutes away from your house. Well, that's usually the tug when you get older, right? Yeah. Kids, your children, your wife, that starts uh, wanting to pull you back to uh, home. Swing and a miss. Chavez down on strikes. A little slider here, Kenny. Let's, let's check it out. It's smaller than his curveball. He throws mostly curveball. Let's see for Cervelli. Bone, a little plate. I don't think it was the best location. I think no. it just fooled Chavez with the pitch. See, now that's where that 93 94, you're touching on that, that low to mid 90s now. Hitters got to gear up a little. So you get away with a mistake of the break ball that's middle of the plate because of that right there, 94. Now here's Pollock. Here's, here's the young man I was talking about. Former number one draft pick. He's three for seven in this series. All three hits are doubles. He's tied for the National League. Lead in doubles oh. with Ian Desmond, the shortstop of the Nationals. They've got seven apiece already. This guy looks like he's going to be a baseball player. Number one pick out of Notre Dame. Yeah. Oh. Count one and two. Fits that mold of what Kirk Gibson and this club is now producing. Yeah, this guy can run, but he can throw. And he checks his. Did he check it? Yep, he checked his swing right there. I mentioned the fact that the Yankees uh, don't see the Diamondbacks very often, but every once in a while you see a player you want to follow. You, you check the box scores and you see what that player did. Is this one of them? Yeah, yeah I'll be checking him from. Uh, well, I'll be checking a little later in this game. He's got a strikeout here. Two strikeouts in the inning for Hughes. We go to the bottom of the second, and Ben Francisco will lead it off. Seven and one, 6.4 runs per game, batting average over 300. They've belted 14 home runs. Their starters have pitched beautifully, and the bullpen has pitched better. Pretty good recipe for success. Well, yesterday, CC made it an eight inning down to Mo. You mentioned about that bullpen, Michael. The recipe for the first game of the series Logan, Boo, Logan looked great. Java came in, Robertson, and Mo. 
That's the thought of all Yankee fans. Derek Jeter got some bad news today. We told you that at the start that uh, they found a small crack in the ankle where the initial injury oh. was. And they're looking now at a return maybe after the All-Star game. And uh, Meredith Morakovic will have more in the next inning. Well, last night, Ben Francisco's only hit as a Yankee got the rally started in the seventh inning that eventually tied the game. And now he has another hit. Francisco, for most of his career, has been sort of a role type player. Is that a fourth outfielder or somebody gets a start against a, a left handed pitcher? And uh, he's uh, come up uh, big last night and trying to get something started here in a second. Here's Francisco Cervelli. Punted okay. that ball twice. But he did not get hit in fair territory. Even out if he did. Here's no look at what Michael's talking about. There's the ball coming up and hitting his bat, but he was he was in foul territory. Apparently. Diamondbacks did not argue. Still in the batter's box. Down one and one. Last night, Wade Miley featured a lot of changeups to Cervelli, and he was he was chasing him, and that was a good take right there. Change up, long way. Some of them were out of the strike zone last night, and the, uh, Corbin just threw him one, and he took it like that. <laughs> Not tonight. Keeping Francisco close. Uh, the bunt attempt by Cervelli isn't tempting uh, Martin Prado. He's playing back. Okay, go ahead. You want to punt? Right field. Ross makes the play for the first half. The bottom of the second. No score here at the stadium. MLB.com at bat is the number one source for live baseball everywhere you go. Available for iPhone, iPad, Android, and BlackBerry 10. At bat delivers Yankees baseball with live audio, pitch tracking, stats, news, highlights, and more. Text at bat to 31826 or visit Yankees.com for details. Oh. Ichiro takes a strike. One and one. Each row with the day off last night. Brennan Bosch played right field. One for three for Brennan Bosch. Each row is looking for that hot streak out. Yeah. yeah. Like a 10 for 20 or you know, 15 for 30. Get that average up where uh, it's more each row like. One and two. One of the pitcher's jobs is to disrupt the timing of the hitter. Whether you're blowing it by him or changing speeds, and Corbett changes speeds nicely on that. You saw the helicopter type swing that Ichiro had at that last pitch. Tough at bat there as Ichiro. Didn't get any good hacks at uh, Corbett too well. Uh, 
Uh, that's a, haven't seen Ichiro swing like that, and I know he's been around a long time. Great hitter. Two curveballs in a row. Patrick Corbin did what most pitchers do after the previous swing, similar. Say, well, okay, well, if he looked like that on that curveball, I'm going to throw it again. It maybe make it a little worse. It wasn't as good as the previous one. Still got it. There's Eduardo Nunez who now has the responsibility of being the Yankee shortstop for the first half of the year. Unless they make a deal, which Brian Cashman said oh. they're not planning on doing, they're not looking into it at this point. And he said there's not much available. Well, I will say this, and uh, Mick Kelleher and the rest of the Yankee coaching staff has done a heck of a job with Nunez. They changed his throwing motion in spring training, they worked on it all spring. And it appears to be paying off. Nunez has been uh, pretty solid in the field. When you look under the E column, what do you find out? Zero. That's right. And, uh, you know, it used to have to hold your breath every time the ball was hit in this direction. Now you start maybe to relax a little bit because he's playing one position. When the Yankees had him moving all over the field, he was like a jack of all trades, but he wasn't a master of any of the positions. Now, now I'm not saying he's a master shortstop. But he's getting to be better than he used to be. And you, you feel more relaxed when the ball's hit in his direction. It was, a, it was his throwing. Yeah. And you mentioned about Mick Keller, the, uh, the infield instructor, coach, first base coach. They worked on his his arc, how he got to his release point. His hand off to the side a little bit, had a lot of tail to his throws to first. I think his hitting will pick up too. But not here. Well, Corbett really. Making the Yankees look bad. Four strikeouts over two innings. We go to the third inning. Nothing, nothing. Medical Center inspired medicine. The Lincoln School Board has no score. And here is the injury report. And this is how it happened. The fractured ankle in game one against the Tigers undergoes surgery a week later. Makes his spring debut on March 9th. One for two is a DH. March 19th, a stiff ankle. The MRI reveals a mild inflammation. March 31st, placed on the 15 day DL. Retro to March 22nd. Today, though, new ankle fracture, small crack discovered. And Yankee GM Brian Cashman said he's expected to be out until after the All-Star break. So that's uh, certainly something that rocked Derek Jeter's world. He loves playing baseball, wants to be out there, and now knows it's going to be July before he can get up to the big leagues. D.D. Gregorius swings at the first pitch and drives it deep to right. There it goes. See ya. And that is Gregorius' first big league home run on the first pitch he sees after being called up. What a debut for D.D. Gregorius. Well, that's something that every kid dreams about. The Diamondback fan got the ball, and uh, they're trying to get it, and certainly uh, get it to Gregorius. 
And he's getting a rousing reception in the dugout. First pitch he sees in the big leagues. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And there's so much said about this kid, how great he can be. Well, they said Michael mostly, you know, how specially is in the field. That figured he was going to be a solid hitter. Then that big three-way trade with the Indians and the Reds. Trevor Bauer going to the Indians. Shin Chu Chu going to the Reds. Young man from Curacao. Look at that smile. What a way to say hello. Swing and a miss. So from a young shortstop to a veteran shortstop, we bring in Meredith Morakovic for more information on Derek. We said that Brian Cashman had said all-star break. Is there a possibility, Meredith, that Derek could miss the whole year? Well, there's always a possibility, but right now the Yankees are choosing to be cautiously optimistic. Brian Cashman was actually asked, does he believe this could be a career-ending injury? And he said all the information he has, what Dr. Robert Anderson has told him, is that 95% of the people that have this injury come back, and they're 100% fine. So right now, Derek Jeter just needs to back off it a little bit. He said it'll take about four to eight weeks for that crack to heal. And then you have to remember, he's going to have to go through what will be almost like an entire spring training. So it's going to be quite some time until he works himself back but you better believe this the Yankees are certainly going to take it slow with Derek Jeter this time around now obviously Meredith he wanted to get back to start opening day and that nothing that should be criticized every player should want to play as much as Derek Jeter wants to play but then people look for negatives and some people are questioning did he push it too much to get back and is that what caused this injury well, you'll never really know, but I can tell you this. He did have two CT scans prior to this third one that revealed that crack, and both of those scans came back clean. They were 100% fine, so at that point in time, there wasn't any issue with that ankle. It showed that it was healing properly and that he was cleared to play baseball, so the Yankees believed, and Derek Jeter believed that it was the right thing in him coming back when he did. Jason Nix dropped the line drive by Para, but then regained and fired over to Euclid. For the second out. So Knicks could play some shortstop, but the starting shortstop is going to be Eduardo Nunez, Meredith. And do you get the feel that the Yankees are okay with this? Or do you think that Brian is secretly going to look to acquire another shortstop? I think they are okay with it. They're definitely okay with it right now. You look at this team. They've won seven out of their last eight games. And, Kenny, I know you were talking a little bit about it last inning, the fact that Eduardo Nunez has been very good defensively so far this season. And you look at the biggest concern with Nunez coming into it, and it was whether or not uh, he could change things defensively, and he changed that throwing motion, and he's looked so much better at shortstop. And you also have to wonder whether or not him knowing that he's going to be on this roster and he's going to be here for a significant amount of time, if that's it's going to help him relax and play even better out there in the field, knowing that he's going to be a part of this team for quite some time. I know that they uh, they had the press conference kind of late. Did anybody get a chance to talk to Nunez? What's his feel on this? Unfortunately, the clubhouse was closed mm -hmm. after that press conference, and then it was raining, so there was no BP on the field. So Eduardo Nunez was not available, but he's the guy that has said since uh, day one of spring training, look, I want to play. I want to be out there in the field. I understand Derek Jeter is the starting shortstop, but if I'm going to be given the opportunity or if I'm given that opportunity, I'm certainly going to give 100%. So I'm sure he's a guy that wouldn't want to wish injury on anybody, but happy to have the opportunity to get out there. Thank you, Meredith. There's Martin Prado. Hits a ground ball to Cano, and that will do it. But the Diamondbacks take the lead. Gregorius had six hits for the Reds last year, but this is his first big league home run on the first pitch he sees in 2013. One nothing Diamondbacks.
official hybrid of the Yankees. Go to yankees.com slash Prius to enter for your chance to win the Yankees Prius plug-in. Here's how we started the conversation. What major league hitter do you think is the most capable of carrying his team's offense and why? So when the conversation started, we hear from M. Fusco, 1227, Robinson Cano. He has powered all fields and sets up protection for guys hitting in front of him and behind him. Follow Yes Network and tweet us your responses using hashtag Yankees Prius to keep the conversation going. Lincoln scoreboard, 1-0 Diamondbacks. And Jason Nix takes a strike. There were a couple of good at-bats in last night's seventh inning, and Jason Nix had one of them. He drove in a run with a bases loaded walk. And that was followed by the two-run single by Brett Gardner. That uh, how the Yankees oh. tied the score in the seventh inning last night. You know, some hitters get to the plate, Al, and you can sense that when the bases are loaded, the moment grabs them. And they, they, they feel like, oh, this is, this yeah. is my chance. i got to do something here. Look, the pitcher's the one in trouble. you you got to make him throw strikes. If you chase chase pitches, you help him. You chased one right there. You, you're so right, Kenny, and I know you know it. Any time that you get a guy and you look at the numbers, whether it's the, uh, really solid for a pitcher to get out of it or vice versa, it's usually the anxiousness of a hitter. And, yes, the pitcher is in trouble. There's a reason why. He's got bases loaded. He's, a, he's four pitches away from walking in or making a mistake. And uh, Jason Nix last night was patient enough to take the walk. Back to the top of the lineup and Brett Gardner. Grounded to second. Pennington bobbles, but gets the speedy Gardner for the second out. Yeah, Pennington's fortunate that we've seen him at shortstop the first two nights. If he did that at shortstop, Brett Gardner would be at first base. He wouldn't have time enough to throw him out. But at second base, got a little bit more time to knock one down, fumble it a little bit, recover. Even with a, a runner with the speed of a Brett Gardner, still have a chance to get him from second base. Yeah, that's a versatile infield here. Cliff Pennington by trade is shortstop. Martin Prado, third baseman, first game in, he was playing third or second base. Chavez at third. Prado could play the outfield too. Prado played the outfield with Chipper Jones of here's in Atlanta. Josh Wilson, longtime shortstop, was playing second last night. Five strikeouts for Corbin so far. He's allowed one hit. Clean single by Ben Francisco, starting the second inning. Good sink on that pitch. Count two and one. Two and two. Yeah, I know, Michael, you mentioned earlier about Phil Hughes and his velocity being up. Here's an example. You know, Patrick Corbin, Yankees haven't seen young kid attacking the zone 92 93 more than enough, especially from the left side. And then that slider down and in, back foot. You know, the reaction time for 90 mile an hour fastball is approximately four tenths of a second. You know, there's such little time. And then as you get obviously closer to that 95, it gets even shorter. Well, you, you, the hitter has to recognize whether it's a ball or a strike, swing at it, and hit it. And what, did it, what is it? Fastball, curveball, slider, yeah. change, boom. Yeah. Vernon Wells works a walk. Second walk issued by Corbin. You know, unlike last night, watching Wade Miley, and it's interesting when you get a, a veteran lineup and just how they approach guys that had, they haven't seen, they, they had some real quick innings, the Yankees did. Eight pitch inning, a 10 pitch inning, seven pitch inning. And that's what Wade Miley last night, the Arizona Diamondbacks pitcher, showed by getting ahead. So as the game went along, the Yankees started swinging earlier in the count. 
up with the Yankees basically put it together against them in one inning. Seventh inning. Yeah, so it was it. Yeah. There's a bottom of the order too. Bosch and Nunez and Nix. Gardner with the big single. I'm sorry, two and oh. Count two and oh. Just saw Robinson Cano take a close pitch for ball two, and it's gives him a. Now he's got the hitter's count: two balls and no strikes. Oh! It's close too, but it wow. called the strike. My my point being that when you show play discipline over a period of time, it, it, it was uh, borderline. The umpires know who the hitters are who have good eyes at the plate, and a lot of times. Those particular hitters get the call. If on the close ones, they won't call the strike. The two one. Two and two. It's almost like hitters who are that good and have that good a batting eye are daring the umpire. You're not going to call that. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Yankees down one nothing. Bottom of the third. Runner on first. Cano at the plate. Missed outside. So that's going to release Vernon Wells from first. Second, Pennington flips to first, and that will do it. No runs, no hits, no errors. One man left on base. Let's go to the fourth inning. It's one nothing. D backs. Line quiz call 1 866 NY quits for free help today. Who's the last pitcher to win three games in a World Series? We'll find that out in the bottom of the inning. So the Yankees trail 1 0, and Hughes is uh, victimized by the bugaboo in his arsenal he gives up home runs he gives up a home run to D.D. Gregorius first big league home run for the rookie and for a guy who gives up fly balls this is a rough ballpark for him to uh, to pitch in coming into this game 
since 2009, he's allowed one home run every 4.9 innings at oh. Yankee Stadium. On the road, he's allowed one home run every 11 innings pitched. So, just about two per game here at Yankee Stadium, and less than one yeah. game on the road. Well, he's a uh, he's not a sinker ball pitcher. At times he gets underneath the baseball. He elevates. He's upstairs a lot. And we got right field here at Yankee Stadium. Hitter friendly. Rounded up the middle. Grabbed by Cano. Off balance throw. Not in time. Lead off single for Goldschmidt as Cano shows a lot of range. Need to make it close. Not only range, but just enough to get on this throw here with no arc. Just bam. A little arc, but enough velocity. Goldschmidt just hustling down the line, making it by a step after step. I don't know too many guys, Kenny, no. going toward left field and have as much on the baseball as Robinson. The, the, he made it closer than any second baseman in the league would have made that play. They'd have put it in their pocket. They wouldn't even try. Yeah, exactly. Here's Montero. Let's take a look at the cheap hitter scatter report for Miguel Montero. Well, last year Montero led all major league catchers and runs batted in with 88. 1,190 innings caught. That was the most in the major league. Second year in a row, he's led all catchers in innings caught. And he threw out 34% of the runners attempting to steal last year. That's, that's above average. The leader, by the way, in major league baseball is Yadier Molina. 46% of the runners who attempted to steal he threw out. And they barely run. Too. Yeah. When they run, he's getting about 50% of the time. There's very little running game with Yadier behind the plate. Made the All Star team first time. Miguel Montero. This should be two. There's one. And there's two. Nice turn by Nunez as Goldschmidt came barreling in. Taylor made double play ball here. Pitcher's best friend. That's why Al is smiling and whoop right next to me. One one pitch gets you two outs. Beautiful. Goldschmidt made uh, Nunez gave a little stare stare down at the end there, didn't he? To get Derek Jeter back, but I tell you, he, is, he plays a solid defense, and I too also believe Kenny he's going to hit. He's a fastball hitter, lay off the off speed. What else do you need? Got to catch the ball, throw it. Look at his errors and mistakes. Steal a few bases for him. In the play we mentioned, he had a pretty good year for the Red Sox last year. Diamondbacks signed him as a free agent. Ross is four for nine in this series. Just coming off the disabled list. And back in the 2010 postseason with the Giants, he had he had a postseason. Five home runs, ten runs batted in for the Giants as they were on their way to the world title. Line to right field. Ichiro is there to retire Ross, and that'll do it. No runs hit, nobody left. At the end of three and a half, it's one nothing down the backs.
kicks off postseason play when it takes on the Bulls in Game 1 at Barclays Center. Coverage starts at 7.30 with the Verizon Fios pregame. Only on yes, so congratulations to the Brooklyn Nets with the fourth seed in the Eastern Conference. There's Brooke Lopez. And Brooke was on the field before the game. He threw out the first pitch. There's a pitch to Euclid's low. Let's see how Brooke did. Imagine him with a 95 mile an hour fastball. A little short armor, huh? Little alligator arm. <laughs> see his elbow good. Didn't bounce it. Hello, playoffs. The Nets, the longtime PR maven, Gary Sussman, guaranteed that Brooklyn would not bounce the pitch. Oh! And Gary was right. He's been doing the dribble before. There's Gary on the right. What was the uh, what was the payout? He was wrong. Well, we'll never know because he didn't bounce. Courtside seats. Barclay Center. Beautiful play. It is. But we would be able to go because we're in Toronto on Saturday. Yeah, but they got other games. So it's three games, right? It's a seven game series. But you yeah. see him going to Could be. like the conference final. This is a tough matchup. I mean, the Bulls. Bulls are very, very good. Great defense. Yeah, solid team. And the Nets finished ahead of them. The Nets finished fourth, Bulls fifth. Jeez. Lopez did bounce his, but Corbin's bounced the last two. Now, Al told you in the scouting report that Corbin grew up a gigantic Yankee fan. So it is no accident whatsoever the number on his back. He idolized Andy Pettit. And that's Andy's number, and that's why he wears it. Grounded to third. Prado. One out. He's flashed some leather in these three games. Prado can play third. Did he ever? Made some beautiful plays left and right. Good all around baseball player, Martin Prado. It's pretty cool, huh? Idolized Andy, and here he is, Yankee Stadium. High pop up. Right side. And Pennington. Makes the play for the second out. All right, let's see the answer to the New York State Smokers quick line quiz. The question was, who's the last pitcher to win three games in a World Series? Randy Johnson. Randy Johnson, yeah. We didn't even, like, even remotely try to hum and haw on that one, did we, last night? Yeah, this is... He and Kurt Schilling that series, really, uh, they were the one-two punch. Basically the only yeah. pitch Steinbeck's had won the series for him. If you could go back to 1957, though, and it was Lou Burdett for the Braves who won three games against the Yankees in a seven-game series. And the Yankees oh. came back the next year, played the Braves again, seven-game series, and the Yankees won. And also in the 60s, Mickey Lowlich yeah. won three games. What, oh, two. what year was that, Lou Burdett? 57, I believe. Good teammate. <laughs> no, you know he's on. He was on our, my black and white television. <laughs> I now people think you don't like Kenny. Yeah. Oh, stop! You can't be playful up here, Michael. Don't no. be so sensitive. I'm not. People are. The O2. <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't on your team. <laughs> I had to wait a few more years before I was on the team. I know he must have been a good teammate. He had uh, Alexa Ward spawn and Hank Aaron, Eddie Matthews. Fly ball right side. Ross on the run. And he makes the play. That's a nice play by Ross, and he caught it in fair territory. So that would have been an extra base hit. Yankees go down in order. One, two, three, and we go to the fifth inning. One nothing. That bounce.
So we go to the fifth inning. It's one nothing Diamondbacks. It'll be Chavez, Pollock, and the man who made it one nothing, D.D. Gregorius, with his first big league home run on the first pitch that he saw this year in the big leagues. Chavez struck out in the second. Now one and zero. Want to give a, a shout out to uh, a little league baseball player. Little League Baseball gearing up now. Saddlebrook, New Jersey. Young should name Dante John Santiago Bowman. And uh, his team is gearing it up now. Just want to say uh, good luck this season. Well, give me that name again. That's no a long kidding. Name. Dante John Santiago Bowman. Wow. Big time Yankee fan. Nice going, Dante. Remember what it was like to put on that little league uniform for the first time? It was, it was big stuff. Grounded to short and under the glove of Nunez, a base hit for Chavez. If that goes under his arm. Does it? Yeah. Not right under the glove. I'll tell you. It's, uh, he went a fair distance because of the shade pull for for Chavez. Yes, Mo. Brought to you by your Mercedes-Benz Tri-State dealer. Reach, reach a little too far. Question: Would he have been able to throw out Chavez had he fielded it cleanly? Pitch to Pollock is high. One of them. Foul below. This is enough giddy up by Phil Hughes getting it by Pollock. Last inning, he was able to get the double play by Miguel Montero. Get that fastball down, a little sinking action. Those are the pitches they usually induce a ground ball. Get the double play last inning off the bat of Montero. The use is usually a fly ball pitcher. You don't get that many uh, double plays turned behind him. Now Phil is trailing in this game, but compared to his last start, he said, I can't remember the last time I was bad as that. So he looks better today for sure. High drive. Left field. It's in the park. Vernon Wells is there. He'll make the catch tagging to Chavez just to draw the throw. One out. This kind of reminds me of the start of use today. Sort of like Nova, around the Nova line, if you will. Nova had a poor start, and then he pitched a better in his second, and he got a win the other night here. Yeah, five innings, two runs. Bullpen did a nice job. Yeah, you're looking for progress. That's what you're looking for. Well, that game, Michael, you mentioned, he went three innings against the Orioles, 60 pitches. Here he is at the fifth inning, 62. One of those pitches. Gregorius hit for a home run, his first big league home run. I mentioned he's from Curacao. He was actually born in the Netherlands. He was born in Amsterdam. But uh, grew up in uh, Curacao, and of course, uh, one of the better young prospects in baseball, Jerks and Profars from Curacao. He's in Texas Rangers organization. Shortstop.
Line drive, and that is a base hit into the corner. Ichiro will play the carom. Chavez is at third. He's going to stop right there, and a double for Gregorius. Well, he's been with the Yankees for over five decades. Later tonight, the Emmy-winning series Yankeeography chronicles one of the greatest executives and best minds of the game, Gene Stick Michael. It's a new Chevy presents Yankeeography tonight after the postgame, only on Yes. Now, I'm sure you'll remember this from years ago. It used to be uh, the town of San Pedro de Marquerese in the Dominican, Dominican Republic that produced all the shortstops. Could Curacao now be uh, producing all the shortstops? Because you mentioned uh, Jerks Profar. Profar, yeah. uh -huh. but, uh, Jonathan uh, Scope. Yep. The middle infielder with uh, uh, Baltimore. Baltimore. Yeah. Here's Pennington. Top back. Yankees are in at the corners, but anything to do a shortstop or second, they will let a run score. Still early enough as far as uh, Joe Girardi and the Yankees are concerned. The Yankees are going to tack on a, a few runs here, give up the out, give up the run for an out. Now I tell you, you're Phil Hughes. I mean, you, you see where the infield is. You realize that you're giving up a run for a ground ball in the middle of the infield to the right side. You got a shot here, 0 2. This is strikeout pitch. And don't worry about your catcher as to whether he's going to block it or not. If you're throwing a breaking ball, you got to think down. There's so many pitchers you see with the runner at third base and gulp, you know, I get the curveball, don't bounce it, kick away. It could be a wild pitch. Ball with pretty close here outside corner. And then you hang it. Yeah, then you hang it. What good is that? You're backing up third. Ooh, that is close. Another heater. Painted away, just missed. On Colpa home plate umpire saw it outside, and that ball was right down the middle. The infield is back at short and at second with Pennington up and Chavez at third. I think if you're a Yankee infielder, either uh, Nunez or Cano, you got to realize who's on third base. Chavez is not the fastest of, of runners. So if the ball's hit fairly hard in your direction or right at you, you, you might take a look towards home before you, you take the easy out at first. For the corners. Yeah. Certainly for the corners too. But even if the ball is hit hard, you know, a, a solid one hopper at Nunez. A, or, or even Cano. Cano has a very strong arm. I, I think you'd have to think about it. Even though the infield's not in. The infield is not in because they don't want Pennington sneaking a, a 52 hopper right. through the infield to score two runs. Swing and a miss. Big strikeout for Hughes. Two away. Huge. He's throwing it both slider and curveball. That's a big out right here. See how this inning plays out. It went a lot of fastballs. One curveball in the dirt. Threw the previous pitch fastball middle of the plate. Cervelli called timeout. Went out to Phil Hughes. Got a better location that. Conversation was probably somewhere around there. And then he comes back with a backdoor slider. Up middle of the plate. Swing and a miss. Cliff Pennington. Good strikeout. Well, Hughes has four strikeouts tonight. Pennington's been two of them. Oh! Strike still at 93 miles an hour. Life on the fastball, 0 and 1. Pop 
popped up. Left center. Coming on is Gardner. And Hughes gets out of a jam. Good job by the Yankee right-hander. No runs, two hits, two men left at the end of four and a half. We are halfway through. One nothing. Error. or laptops with Time Warner Cable. Get a full season of live Yankee games on the go for just $29.99. If you're a Time Warner Cable customer, go to yesnetwork.com to get more information and subscribe now. We've got a pitcher's duel here in the Bronx. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Ichiro leads off. And a strike from Patrick Corbin. Also mentioned, uh, you said about the 46 and Andy Pettit, his idol. Tino Martinez? No, what about him? Another one of his idols. Oh. Tried to pull that outside pitch. A oh. big Yankee run. The championships. Patrick Corp was about 11 years old. No, less than that. That's his age now? 23. <laughs> <laughs> He's 23. So 23, last time during that run they won was 2000. That was 10. Yeah, but that's at 98. Right. So in 95 or 96, he was, he was five. So there's no idea what was going on. <laughs> do you remember anything, Kenny, from when you were five? Yeah. I you remember. do, really? Oh, yeah. I went to my first baseball game. I remember my dad taking me. I remember the first movie he ever took me to see. What was that? It was a John Wayne movie. And I remember the words that my dad said John Wayne was John. Basically, he was John Wayne in the movie. Right. And we're walking home. My dad said, sometimes, son, you got to rely on yourself. I like it. Yeah. And I remember it because my dad told me that. The O2. Do you remember when you were five? I can honestly say I have some difficulties remembering a week ago. Yeah, but that's normal. Short term memory. Awesome. <laughs> Nunez is down looking. Six strikeouts now for Corbin. The good fastball slider combination. Basically, that's what he's thrown all night long. The occasional changeup. Not afraid to attack. More of the Yankee hitters inside corner. Just inside, but again, that angle, that shoot where he's coming from, from the left side. 
three-quarter arm action. He kind of sets up from the windup like Andy Penn. Look at how he, you know, peering over the glove. Corbin makes a nice play, and he gets mixed, and Corbin has retired seven in a row. We have played five in the stadium. Diamondbacks won. Yankees nothing on yes. Brought to you in part by your tri-state area Volkswagen dealers. Visit VWDealer.com. By Blimpy, America's Self Shop. And by Kettle One. Gentlemen, this is vodka. Please drink responsibly. So Hughes and Corbin have done a great job. One mistake by, by Phil. That was serving up the home run to D.D. Gregorius. And that's where we stand right now. One nothing as we go to the six. Yankees looking for a sweep. Diamondbacks looking to salvage the final game of this three game set. Nice low pitch count from Phil. 74 pitches here in the sixth inning. Battling the young Corbin, who's got a one hitter going. Oh! You know that as the opposing pitcher. Now we'll see how this game plays out. I know there's plenty more at bats to go. But you got to think that way. If your guys are facing a tough pitcher, as you mentioned, Mike, a mistake. I guess when you call it mistake, a fastball up, home run, up, up. That one's driven deep to left field. Backing up is well. See ya. Home run for Martin Prado. Another home run served up by Hughes. Both of them solo shots, but it's two nothing Diamondbacks. Not again to finish the point. Is it you one zip? You know what you got in front of you, as your lineup does. Every single pitch. You talk about the execution. Try not to make mistakes. Exploit a hitter's weakness. Prado. Prado's third home run. Yeah, well, you were talking about the, the good all-around ball player that Prado is. He led the National League in multi-hit games last year with 60. And this time he jumps on a high fastball. Now both the home runs that Hughes has given up tonight have been lead-off home runs. In other words, he's trying to get the ball over so he doesn't walk the hitter and get it out. Basically get the guy out, but pitches were too fat right there. You all want the Goldschmidt. You know, you said at the beginning of the game, Al, you showed how he sets up and where it ends up, and this is the same deal right here. Yeah, I mean, that, that's this is every pitcher, Michael. But that, you know, you watch where the where the location. He wants somewhere here. Ideally, that's what you're trying to do. If you're going away, you want to be knee high, right? I mean, that's missing by, you know, whatever, a foot, two feet, and it happens. But this is the kind of gunslinging aspect that Phil Hughes brings, and I know this is what he's done since Tustin High School, and he was the number one pick. But those are the moments when the game. Now, yeah, if you're up five to one. 
and you got a good hitter to Martin Prado. Not that he's a home run hitter. Here it is hitting. You know, not every guy's going to hit it out of the ballpark. But you're in a one nothing deficit, and every pitch matters. And you know, as the, at the open, showing some of his mistakes. 35 home runs he gave up last year in 191 to third innings. And I know it's not easy. Done it, given up plenty, had a high crooked number of ERAs as myself. It, it's just that's kind of where you eventually hope to get as a pitcher to think about how many of these pitches tonight am I going to execute? Exploit a hitter's weakness, hit the glove, go over my game plan, know what I'm trying to do. That guy played with uh, some great pitchers in my career, but I, I think of Jack Morris, the year he won 20, 20 games with the Blue Jays. And he used to say, talk about it, even Dave Stewart, a couple 20 game winner, you know, pitch to the scoreboard at times. You know, don't always try to strike a guy out. It's 5 nothing. you're 2 0 2 1 count. And often, I think Jack Morris, you know, he's gotten kind of penalized via the Hall of Fame votes because of his high ERA. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many times that, you know, he said I, I really didn't care about it. I cared about winning the game. You should probably see Jack Morris in Toronto. He's working on the radio with the Blue Jays now. He wasn't a fun pitcher to hit against. I don't know if he had the opportunity, yeah, but uh, I had too many of them. A split, right? Yeah, he had nasty split. He split a hit play. He threw hard. He did fastball. He was always in the attack mode. Swing and a miss. Good pitch. Strikes out Goldschmidt. It's a good pitch. Watching this series, Goldschmidt liking a lot of pitches out over. We saw CC Sebastian had less the fastball out over. That's a good spot for any big guy. He's shown that he's going all fields, left center, right center. The bigger they were, I thought the farther in you could go, especially up and in. Well, plus, it, with two strikes, he seems to want to go that way. And uh, the way you battle as a pitcher, you jam him inside. Get as, get near as much as you got on your fastball. There's a strike to Montero. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Yankees. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated. Without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Jet swing. Because he said he did not go. Good sequence right here. Curveball, fastball in on his hands, and then another curveball down. He did not go. He checked his swing. Good call. Good pitch. Yeah, it is close. Well, he's got for that combination the, the curveball slider. Speed variation of about five, six miles an hour difference. Tap slowly to third. Nix gets Montero. That ball took a bit of an irregular hop as it was a. Nix had to reset himself just at the last there to make the throw across the diamond come up with the ball. Ball had a lot of spin on it coming off the bat. And you can see just as he gets in position, he's going to have to move one more step to his left. See, so he's right there. There he goes, right there. 
little English cue ball. Yeah. See, yeah. see that little hop? Irregular hop, to say the least. Count on one to Ross. So two home runs allowed by the Yankee starter tonight. Now he led Major League Baseball with 22 home runs allowed at home last year. He's allowed five at home already this year. You can't go crazy over the two tonight because they're solo shots. And two nothing after six is not terrible as he gets Cody Ross to ground out. So Gregorius touched him up once. This time it was Prado. Prado with his third home run of the year. It's two nothing Diamondbacks at the bottom of the six. Bios quantum internet technology that makes you feel superhuman. That's powerful. Andy Pettit pushed back from uh, his start because of a sore back. Now he's fine. 2 0, 1.20 against Brandon Morrow. You see his numbers. Our coverage begins at 6 30 on yes. First pitch right around 7 05 from Rogers Center. And there's a strike as Brett Gardner leads off the bottom of the inning. Looking forward to that series. Kenny. See the vibe up there at Skydome in Toronto. I know they made the uh, the big splash in the winter with uh, some of their trades. Well, Art Dickens throwing a, a good game tonight against the White Sox up in Rogers Center. Oh, yeah, well, what's up? Three zip, seven thirty. Oh. Count one and two. 15 innings Corbin's gone without allowing a run. Look how Miley was pitching yesterday and suddenly unraveled in the seventh. Check swing. Did he go? Yes, he did. Said Cuzzy. Gardner not thrilled. He goes down on strikes. Well, here's that, that curve slurve pitch that he's thrown power. Ball bounced right in front of home plate, but again, what Patrick Corbin has shown these Yankee hitters enough of a fastball to respect it. That's where you see Brett Gardner out front, kind of anticipating, honoring a 93 mile an hour fastball and good sharp break. It, to me, it's more of a slurve. It's got a power breaking ball to it. Down and away from the lefty, down and in on the righty. Season high, seven strikeouts.
Goldschmidt. Two outs. And that'll bring up Cano. Cano walked in the first and grounded the second and the third. Strikes, but at good locations too. I mean, knee high outside corner. Driven deep to right center field. There it goes. See ya. Home run, Cano. Yankees on the board. It's 2 1 Arizona. Well, Al, I think that's the worst pitch he's made all day. Could get the breaking ball away and left it up. And Robinson could know now with five home runs on the season. He's got three hits in the series. Two of them are homers. And that tack on run by Phil Hughes. This ball game would be tied. His previous at bat, Patrick Corbin went right after Cano, and I was impressed with just fastball, fastball, fastball. Robbie ended up grounded out. That is a hanging slider, middle of the plate. Robinson Cano, five home runs. Needless. Takes a strike. Last eight games for Cano, five home runs and 12 ribbies. Let's look at it on Yesmo. Beautiful, huh, Kenny? Foot down. Power personified. The back of the bullpen. It off and fouls it off. The two two. Oh, off of Corbin Pennington to Goldschmidt for the final out. Was a base hit up the middle, slowed down by Corbin. Ricochets to Pennington. And then Pennington gets Euclid. But the Yankees get a run. We go to the seventh.
your local Nissan dealer. Three home runs, three runs. Gregorius and Prado, each with solo home runs. Cano accounted for the Yankee run in the sixth. And the youngster Corbin, six innings, two hits, one run, two walks, and seven strikeouts. So we go to the seventh inning. Ben Francisco. Check that. Eric Chavez leads oh. off. And there's a strike. Cadillac scoreboard, 2-1 Diamondbacks. Ben Francisco will lead off for the Yankees in their half of the season. Chavez fouls it back, 0-2. Boone Logan heating up. Broken back, ground ball up the middle. Nunez. He doesn't like giving up two home runs, but Phil Hughes has pitched pretty well tonight. Much better than against the Orioles. He's thrown harder. He's had better command. I think we have to remember, Michael, he didn't get much in the way of spring training because yep. he was bothered by that uh, bulging disc in his back. And, uh, you know, that might have made him even more tentative any time he went out to the mound. Just to make sure he didn't hurt himself again. It's a very good start, Michael. No doubt about it. I mean, the Yankees have a, a handful of runs here. Solo home runs generally don't beat you. You get a little offense on a given night. It's the crooked numbers that you give up that's a problem. But yeah, I mean, you're facing a guy that's uh, that's two hit in your team and one run on the board after six. And also to this moment right here Phil Phil knows this he knows that Boone Logan's warming up that that hundred pitch count that the bells go off on every big league uh, stadium and managers to get through this inning get a chance in the bottom of the inning, your team to score So 2 on Pollock. And I know the hundred pitch count across baseball and it, there's no doubt about it protection of the arm. Um, there's enough data out there to, to show abuse and pitchers that throw in excess of 120 130 or you know once upon a time it, it, that was common. But see how they get there tonight's game Phil Hughes pitched an excellent ball game. His stuff really hasn't fallen off. He's still hit 93 both curveball slider. So while you. You see the pitcher at 102 pitches. You know what do the eyeballs tell you? I mean, look at the ball strike ratio. That's fantastic. The two two. No bite on that breaking ball. Three and two. Payoff. Fly ball right field. Ichiro Suzuki puts it away for the second out. This season, the Yankees are pleased to introduce the New York Yankees Ticket Exchange by Ticketmaster, the new official resale marketplace of the Yankees and Yankees.com. Yankees Ticket Exchange is a safe, secure, convenient, and affordable place for fans to buy and resell tickets. Visit Yankees.com slash ticket exchange today to buy and resell your tickets. Here is D.D. Gregorius. Pitch outside. 
He's been a problem tonight. First pitch he sees, solo home run, then he doubles in the fifth. Good breaking ball, one and one. Well, there that tells you what Joe uh, Girardi and Larry Rothschild are seeing. 106 pitches, deserving to get through this inning. Getting on the mound quick, getting the sign and ripping it. One, two. Check swing and fouled it off. Third inning, first pitch down the middle. Not knowing a whole lot about Didi Gregorius. Big prospect with the Reds coming over in a trade. First pitch that he saw tonight. To 93 on what's probably his last pitch of the night. Phil Hughes with seven strong innings. And at the end of six and a half, it's time for the seventh inning stretch. Gregorius goes down on strikes. The Yankees are trailing two to one, but we'll stay right here to honor America in the Bronx. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise and remove your caps. And please direct your attention to the area behind home plate. And welcome two honored guests of the New York Yankees. Air Force Staff Sergeant Michael Martino Jr., who served in Vietnam, and Air Force E-4 Senior Airman Amanda Martino, who served in Operation Iraqi Freedom. The Yankees would like to say thank you for your sacrifice and service to our nation. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please join in Kate Smith's rendition of God Bless America.
as well as Meredith Morakovitz as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. This is the pitcher's duel that we're enjoying right now. Corbin's gone six with one run. Hughes gone seven with two runs. Hughes did not walk a batter. Ben Francisco takes low. 1-0. and oh. There really hasn't been much creativity here. Pound the zone, good fastball, and the uh, the power slider. It's been his combination. Cadillac scoreboard shows a 2-1 Diamondbacks. Is that ball fouled away? And thrown just enough in on the righties for them to just leak a little bit. Is he coming in? He's had command pretty good on both sides. Patrick Corbin has done a good job. The one two. Foul back. What you're trying to say is how he's pitched well from corner to corner. And that's it keeps the hitters off balance. It's Matt Reynolds, another left hander up the bullpen. For the Diamondbacks. See that guy standing behind him, Glenn Sherlock? Came out of the Yankee system, went to Arizona with Buck Showalter. He has survived all the managers the Diamondbacks have had. He's been an employee of that organization since before there was a team. Good guy. Yes. And to survive all those managers is obviously likable. He's one of my catchers in uh, Double A Albany. The Yanks. Long Bob Garrett. Remember Bob Garrett? Yeah. Yeah. He's now the bench coach. The Mets. With the Mets. Remember Buck Showalter just traveling around baseball doing scatting, <laughs> getting ready for the draft. That one is drilled to left field, but it is hooking foul. Just a little too quick. Francisco works a walk. Well, this is where it unraveled yesterday for Miley. And Charles Nagy is checking to see if everything's going well in the bullpen. Well, as Al said, when you start to approach that uh, 100 pitch mark, especially when a youngster on the mound, and uh, Corbin's up to 90 now, and you notice Reynolds had been throwing at the beginning of the inning. So he'd be ready at a moment's notice. This is similar what happened last night with the left hand Wade Miley and Tony Sipp, the left handed reliever, came in to relieve to face a left hander. Fly ball. Left field. Pollock makes the catch, guys. I, I couldn't get it out in time, but you surprised that Cervelli didn't bunt there. Yes. You got each row the left hander on deck. You got a guy that's dominating on the mound. You only have two hits. You get down towards the bottom of the order. And they were they would pitch to each row. He hadn't really been hit yeah. to hit the ball out of that well. Maybe uh, Joe Girardi looking at each row's 189 average and Cervelli's 310 average coming into the game. So let the Cervelli swing the bat. And I think the reason why, Michael, it's a valid point, is that, you know you've got two hits up to this point. One of them is solo home run, hanging slider by Robinson Cano. Pitcher showed the definite dominance during the night. And also, Ichiro has singled his way into the Hall of Fame one day. Yeah. Move the guy in scoring position, and he dunks one over the shortstop and tie the game. But We'll see how this plays out. Line right at Goldschmidt didn't play out well. So each row lines into a double play, and that's going to do it in the seventh. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. He hit it hard, but right at the first baseman who steps on the bag.
Prius plug-in. Go to yankees.com slash Prius. All right, Joe Girardi makes the call to the bullpen. Brought to you by AT&T. And he brings on the left-hander, Boone Logan. Boone Logan, what a nice job he did in the first game of this series. Von Nova threw five innings, two runs, and then Boone came in for four outs. Inning in a third, had some 94 mile an hour velocity on his fastball, looked good. So Logan against Pennington. Down the way. Monday scoreboard 2 1 Diamondbacks. Trying to leave New York with one win. They lost the first two games 42 and 43 last night. So no blowouts in this series. Well pitched ball games. If It's good to see both Nova and Hughes have good outings. It bears well for the future. Why make the move to a lefty here while well, Pennington, Para, and Prado so far this year, eight for 59 against lefties? That's 136. But Logan now 3 1 on the number nine hitter. And if Kirk Gibson, you'd notice he had Reynolds up in the bullpen because the Yankees had Bosch, Hafter, and Overbay on the bench, left handed hitters. That's why uh, Reynolds got up. And he saw what Hafter could do last night. Job of dealing. The three two. Euclidus will make the play. Hey, to vote for the Chevy player of the game, visit votechevy.com. Results will be revealed in the post-game show. After the game, the Yankees will head to Toronto for a three-game set, and the Diamondbacks are going to Colorado. And hopefully, for their sake, it's warming up. Today against the Mets, the Rockies started the game 28-degree temperatures. That was going like January. Ground ball first. Nice play by Euclid. Has to retrace the step on the bag. Two outs. Here's a look at Euclid. Said first of all, uh, went right over the bag. Got to get <laughs> Looked like he was upset with himself for missing the bag, and turn around and go back. David Hernandez is up to the Diamondbacks. That's going to do it for Boone Logan with Martin Prado due up. He's going to face Java.
630 with the Tri-State Ford pregame. And that's only on yes. That'll be uh Al. Yeah. Wait, what? And myself. <laughs> Surprise me. You scared me for a minute. Oh, yeah, Meredith's gone. We're all going out of the country. Got some passports with you, everybody? Yes. Okay. Looking forward to it. Six game for Java. Last time out, he looked better. So I'm trying to get that ERA down. Boone Logan really is a valuable pitcher for this team. He's the only lefty, so obviously that makes him very important. Yes. But he can take ownership part of the seventh inning. You know, coming off that concern in spring training where Logan was having uh, some elbow issues, it looks like uh, he's just fine right now. Thank couple, you. Thank couple, you. Yeah, a couple 94s. I'll tell you what. These relievers, and they get a couple days rest. It, it's just a whole fresh new feel for these guys. The grind of the 70, sometimes 80 appearances a year. There's a strike from Jabba. 93 mile an hour fastball. Prado's home run right now is the difference in this game. Gave the Diamondbacks a 2 0 lead, and Cano hit a home run. Now it's 2 1 here in the eighth. Another good oh. fastball strike. 0 oh 2. 95 on the corner. Down the way. Beautiful. Push it a little further outside. Rounded to short, Nunez sets, fires low and past Euclid. And Prado reaches, so that'll be the first error for Nunez this year. Nice bound to fill that column sooner or later, and a nice pickup, but there's two parts to every play for an infielder. The throw gets by Euclid, couldn't handle it, it was into his body too much. And as Michael called it, first error of the year for Eduardo Nunez. And you can see if the throw was accurate, he would have gotten him. Here's Goldschmidt. And that one's popped up. Knicks makes the play, and that'll do it. No runs, no hits. One error and one man left. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Nunez will lead it off.
Torres and John Flaherty have all the key plays from tonight's matchup and also highlights from around baseball. Plus, Meredith Morakovic gets the clubhouse reaction and also you get Joe Giugardi's manager's report. It's the WB Mason postgame. It's only on Yes. All right, we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. And we get a look at David Hernandez. David Hernandez yesterday is the one who gave up the game-winning home run to Travis Hacker. So Corbin did a good job. And now it'll be Nunez, Nix, and Gardner. Monday scoreboard 2 1 Diamondbacks. Now the Yankees could pinch hit for Dix. And then all you do is you move Euclid over third. And we send Overbay up, he takes over first. But if Nunez singles, then Girardi might keep it next to Bunt. Oh, nice play by Prado. Yeah. It's been a bad idea to hit a ball in his direction. And he has flagged down some rockets in this series. And another one prevents an extra base hit. See how he stays low? You know, it's not like he's standing uh, and reaching down to get the ball. He is down there with the ball. As he makes the move over towards the line. Gets down on the knee, pops back up, strong arms at the first. Excellent play. Martin Prado. There might be gold in his future. Well, the Yankees um, are going to burn three players with this one move. They're going to send Travis Hafner up to pinch in for Knicks. Hafner doesn't play the field, so that means you have to use Overbay at first base. So. Three players is one move. And this might be the reason why they're doing it. Yeah, this is their shot right here, Michael. The first pitch, I think you saw it, 96 mile hour fastball. David Hernandez. The ball game was tied after that. Yanks went up. Won the ball game. Oh! Goes with a breaking ball this time. Another breaking ball. Hafner yesterday became only the second Yankee in the last nine seasons to the first pitch, pinch hit home run. Curtis Granderson was the other, and that was last September. That's his first fastball, two and one. Shift is on. Three infielders on the right side. Ooh. Trying to tie it up right there. Miguel Montero called for a fastball away. Hernandez shook, and he remembered very short memory last night. His best heater after put in the right field bleachers. Yeah, this this was a home run swing though, and the pitch was not the best breaking ball. It was kind of up and out over the plate. He just swung and missed it. Almost hit him in the count three and two. So he's seen the breaking ball, he's seen the fastball. We see David Robertson warming up. What are you trying to get him out with here? Al? I, I'm still thinking memory is short. He threw a fastball last night past after a game winning home run. He's, he's already shaken Miguel Montero twice to get to the slider. I'm thinking Hernandez wants to get him out on a breaking ball. Memory short, and so is the right field porch. So we'll see what they do. He went with the breaking ball, did not throw a strike. So Hafner walks. Good at bat, Travis Hafner. Now it makes sense. You pinch run over Bay, who's going to take over at first. So he uh, will pinch run for Hafner. Mm -hmm. 
Abner's always had a pretty good eye at the plate. Doesn't chase too many bad pitches. And, uh, you know, now you got the tag run on. For three against Corbin, so he's glad that he's out of the game. Struck out twice. Kid was impressive. I think anytime you get uh, a player who comes back to his home area, as uh, Corbin has tonight, I know he's uh, from uh, just north of Syracuse, but People get down here to Yankee Stadium. Also, watch it on TV. He's got a lot of friends uh, back in that area watching the game on yesterday. Right in on the hands, and he fights it off. Bay leads off first, held there by Goldschmidt. Told you yesterday, Overbay was really a, a mentor for Goldschmidt. Taught him how to play first base. Goldschmidt used to be really a negative for the Diamondbacks with the glove. Now he's actually turned into a proficient first baseman. Overbay taught him a lot. And then gave him the keys to the car. Yep. <laughs> and he drove away. One and two. That one is looped in the right field. It is a base hit. Ross gets it in, a single for Gardner, and the tying run is in scoring position. Well, Gardner got a breaking ball, and he broke his bat, but you, you'll take the base hit every single time. Got in on him. Let's see if we can see that bat. Yep, yeah, there it goes. Right around the label. It's a good bat. Yeah, he gets the desired result, though, with a base hit. Flips it over the infield. Good approach. Wide, wide stance, two strike approach. Fought off some good fastballs. Lyle Overbay has done something no other Yankee has done in this game. Not into scoring position. Cano took a trip around the bases, but he's the first Yankee to seven base. Let's see if the Yankees could get him in. Here is Vernon Wells with first and second, one out. Yankees down two to one. A little breaking ball and missed. He's a little fastball shy today. After the half of the home run yesterday. The 1 0. There's the fastball. 2 0. Yeah, remember, Vernon Wells has always been a pretty good high fastball hitter. Belt high, just, just below the letters. And on the inner half, and we've seen his bats have been a little quicker this year. Now he can pick and choose. Two balls and no strikes. 3 0. And on deck is Cano. But nobody warmed it up in the bullpen. Surprise. Well, we saw Matt Reynolds earlier. Right? 
It would take him long to get going. Kenny, green light here? Uh, no, not with Cano coming up next. The pitch. Outside, he walked him on four pitches to load the bases. This is where Kirk Gibson is just keeping the confidence and faith in his setup guy. He's got Heath Bell down there prior to J.J. Putz. Here earlier in the game, hanging slider. The lone run by the Yankees back of the Yankee bullpen. So now somebody will get up and Nagy will go out and talk with Hernandez. The only out recorded in this inning was a really nice play by Martin Prado. So with one out, the pinch hitter Hafner walked. Gardner broken back single to right. And then Wells walked on four pitches. Now, no matter how this game turns out, whether the Yankees complete this comeback, one thing they have shown in the early going of the season, a propensity to come back. They've got some grittiness, some guttiness to them. And uh, they're never going to be the little engine that could. They're the New York Yankees, but they are playing backups. They're undermanned. Some of their best players are on the DL. But they're in every single game, and there's something to be said for a team that believes it can win. And the pitchers have been doing a pretty good job. The starters. And the bullpen lately has been uh, fantastic. Well, if you're the Yankees, this is the guy you want up. Chance to go ahead. Bases loaded. One man out. Here's Cano. Miss low. Early going, he's the best hitter on the team in this spot. 417. Well, right now, David Hernandez has shown that he cannot find the plate. His fastball is all over the place. Robinson Cano is going to pick a spot somewhere he likes a lot. It's there, let it fly. No one out. He's had 10 looks at Hernandez in his career with two hits. And one of those two a home run. Back in the days when uh, Hernandez was dealing for the uh, Baltimore Orioles. Time both run 90 feet away. I was going to say both as a starter and as a reliever. Two. So he's fouled off two fastballs. A couple upstairs, Michael. It may have been a ball. A little anxious. You got a pitcher on the mound. Good fastball. Missing command. Be aggressive here. Base hit to the outfield with Gardner at second base. Yankees are up. Boy, that sign says it all. All it takes is a single. Check swing. No, it hit him. And that's going to force him to run. Now they'll see if, in fact, he checked the swing. And he did. So he gets hit by a pitch. Kirk Gibson is going to come out and argue. And the score is tied at two. Now, wait a minute. They're saying yeah. he did swing. Now they're saying he did swing. And the initial move by Guccione was he checked. So he did swing, and he's going to strike out. And the swing supersedes the hit by pitch. Here's another look. Yeah, he did go around. The ball hit him. But that means the runners have to go back. Oh, wow. What a break that the D-backs get here. The runners have to return. It almost seems like Culpa had to coax it out of him. This is after he reached first, but his initial sign was he did not swing. So then Guccione said he did swing after being asked a second time. See, but it's not his call. It's a third base umpire's call when there's a left-handed hitter at the plate. You're right. So here's Euclid now with two outs and the bases loaded. Oh. 
And there, the fastest fastball for him, 96 miles an hour. See, right away, if you look at two pointing yeah. right here, he's saying. He's, he's called him out. He pointed and said, you swung at him. Yeah, there he yeah. goes. And we've heard from Paul O'Neill numerous times. Nothing bothers a hitter more than the home plate umpire making that call. According to Paul, you can't see balls and strikes and also see if the guy's swinging the bat. He said you have to check with the base umpire to know for sure. But the home plate umpire, Culpa, said he went around. So 0 and 2 on Euclid. Those are the numbers against Fernandez. Stays alive. Yeah, I, I see what Paul is talking about on close pitches where an umpire has to track it to the very end. But some balls that are just clearly out of the hand ball, it's easy for an umpire to say, okay, that's a ball, and then identify swing or not. 0 oh and 2, two outs, bases loaded. Yankees with a chance to tie or go ahead. And Euglis takes high, 1 and 2. When watching the replays, they got the call right. He did go around. But now Euclid has a chance to pick him up. Popped up right side. And Goldschmidt runs out of room. Seems like the two fastballs that Cano fouled off got Hernandez back in the groove. The one was out of the strike zone, like Al called. It was a little too high. And uh, Cano actually helped him out. And that flipped the count into uh, Hernandez's favor. That's what Euclid has done in these situations in the early going. One, two. Good, yeah, Euclid's yeah. trying to stay in there, huh? Yeah, he didn't mind if he got hit there. Pulled a little Craig Vigio. That's his shoulder. The 2-2. Two -two. Swung on it. Missed on the breaking ball. And Hernandez comes all the way back to get out of problems. Yankees were so close to tying. But now we'll go to the ninth inning. Uh, the Mitsubishi Outlander Sport Limited Edition. Visit 
MitsubishiCars.com slash tomorrow. Disappointing bottom of the eighth inning for the Yankees. They were primed to either tie or take the lead, but clutch pitching by Hernandez, the check swing by Cano, but he did go around and then the strikeout of Euclid. So it's 2-1 as we go to the ninth inning. Jabba will remain in. He got the final out of the eighth. He'll face Montero, Ross, and Chavez. Jabba looked good in the eighth inning, throwing the ball hard. And for strikes. Fly ball, left center, long run for Gardner. Hey, he cannot make the play. He got there and could not haul it in. And we'll see how they score that as Montero is at second. Ball's hit well, and Gardner has to get on his horse to get to it. And he does. But it's almost like he overran it. Reaches out. And the ball hits off the uh, like the heel of his glove near the thumb. And I, I've got to call that an error. That, that ball should have been caught. God, he went in such a long way. There's Cody Ross. And that one is looped over the head of Cano and into center field. Holding up was Montero. So he can only go to third. Base hit for Ross. First and third. Nobody out. Fred Robbie, does he think that it's died a little sooner? He jumps a little too early. Maybe another step back, he would have had a better shot at it. Even so, Montero had to hold up to make sure he didn't catch it. Could only advance 90 feet. They're going to score that uh, Montero fly ball as, as a hit. hit. Okay. I, I'm only thinking he went a long way. I know once he got there and checked up, he could have had it. Obviously, hit him on the wrist. But don't you almost have to separate it out? He did get there. It was yeah. a long run, but yeah. he got there and, and didn't make the play. So now, Job is in a jam, really through no fault of his own. And the Yankees have to pull the infield in to keep it a one run game. The pitch to Chavez is a strike. Sean Kelly and David Phelps up for the Yanks. Another strike at 95 miles an hour on the corner. A strikeout would be big here, then you could set up the double play. Yeah, that's exactly what you think here, right here, if you're Java Chamberlain. Painted that fastball corner down the way. Swing and a miss. 95 miles an hour. He overpowered Chavez for the first out. Good sure job of reach back for a little bit extra during this whole at bat. Two fastballs painted the outside corner, then right on by. Picks up his first strike out of the game. Here's Pollock. Looks like the infield's going to remain in. Huh. Surprise, middle, middle infield, double play depth. Pollock, a good runner. I think that's a replay for for Nunez and Cano. They're they're still mindful of of being able to turn a double play, but close enough to get Montero at home. Yeah, if the ball's hit pretty hard, they'll go for two. As Al said, uh, Pollock has very good speed.
to 97 miles an hour he dials it up to I haven't seen that in a while that's, that's about seven. as good as he's looked this year if you look ahead to the bottom of the ninth for the Yankees it's Ben Francisco Francisco Cervelli and Ichiro Suzuki Remember, Overbay's at first for the Yankees. Euclid is now at third. And the pitch. Nubbed in front of the plate. And they've got Montero hung up. Montero's tagged out. And it's a double play. No, he did not get the tag down. Cody Ross got in ahead of the tag by Nunez. And Joe Girardi is going to come out and argue. That's Phil Cousins who says he missed the tag. There's another look. He's out. It looked like he tagged him on the bicep as he was reaching. Let's take another look. Maybe this is a better angle. From that angle, it looks like he was safe. It looked like he got the right hand in. An evasive type ta uh, slide by Cody Ross. Trim move. Nice. Cody Ross pulling his left arm back. Phil Cuzzy saw the tag, and then as Nunez continued to make the tag more pronounced. Watch Cody Ross pull his left arm back. Look at Chad tag him on the chest. Up on the arm at least. Breaking ball misses to Gregorius. The ball definitely beats him. Also, Nunez wants to put his foot in front of the bag there rather than on top of the bag. It would have made it more difficult for Ross to get in. One and one. Good night for the youngster. His first game with the Diamondbacks. Two for three first pitch that he saw he hit for a solo home run. Then he doubled in the fifth, struck out in the seventh. One one runner goes. Check swing. Did he go? No, he did not. Count two and one. So a stolen base for Pollock. That's a left not to throw through. Strike away from getting out of it. Now watch this. This is uh, <laughs> Gregorius takes one off the foot. He's up. Didn't even take the stand of eight count. Just uh, cut right up off the canvas. Ready to go again. Watch him last minute. Oh, knocked the glove out of Cervelli's hand. Cervelli might be hurt. Watch him come up shaking that left hand. So that's catcher's interference, and you also give an error to Cervelli. 
So Stevie Donahue and Joe Girardi come out. They go back to the dugout. Now bases loaded for Cliff Pennington. that tape on the uh, index finger there is because the pounding that the ball just by receiving the ball from the pitchers that's why he wears the tape on the on the finger to begin with now he gets it hit with a bat big spot in this game bases loaded two outs Pennington at the plate high fly ball right center Gardner is there he gets a gives way to Ichiro and that will do it so Java in a jam, first and third, nobody out. He gets out of it. Postseason play when it takes on the Chicago Bulls in game one at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Coverage starts at 7.30 with the Verizon Fios pregame only on Yes. Nets finished fourth in the East. The Bulls finished fifth. And we'll see how that first game goes. J.J. Putz comes on. Try to pick up his third save. This is his seventh game. 11 strikeouts in six innings. Yankee fans might remember him, uh, his days out on the West Coast with the Seattle Mariners, a very hard thrower. You can see 11 strikeouts in six innings. Opponents are hitting just 190 against him. Good split finger. Yeah, they, good fastball as well. Came over to the Mets, had elbow surgery, didn't do much there, and resurrected his career. Just found a new home in Arizona. Out in the desert. Awarded with a two year deal this winter. All right, Brennan Bosch is going to pinch hit for Ben Francisco. Yankees down two to one, bottom of the ninth inning. And a strike. Well, that's all the Yankees have on their bench. Chris Stewart, and he's the only other catcher, so. That's only in an emergency. Joe Girardi plays his last card, Brendan Bosch. One and one. For a 2 1 game, a lot of strange and wacky things. I was looking up to see if there's a full bullet, but uh, a little cloudy today. Impressive outing by Java Chamberlain looked really strong. A one one. Two and one.
high fly ball, center field. Gerardo Parra is there for the first out. Well, we checked it out, Kenny. The last or the next full moon is going to be April 25th. So a little short. And the last one was March 27th. Okay. Let me write that down. But uh, this one played like a full moon. Yeah, it did. Uh, puts last year had 32 saves. The year before, his first year in the desert had 45 saves. That's a career high. Here's Francisco Cervelli, 0 for 3 tonight. Oh. Arizona with the no doubles defense as Prado hugging the line at third. But Goldschmidt way off the line at first, so they do not think that Cervelli will be late and hit one down the first baseline. Two. Those are the last two years for the right hander. Yankees looking to sweep this series. But they have to rally to do it. Count one and two. Driven to left field and deep. Going back, Pollock. Still back. Track. Wall. Tie game. See ya. Oh, the Yankees come back again, and they tied it in the bottom of the ninth. Well, I guess that figure wasn't bothering uh, Cervelli all that much. Got a hang. Looked like a slider out. That was oh, off. Hey. The split that was upstairs after the first two fastballs, Cervelli could play. Oh, yeah. Middle of the plate. This is unbelievable. All three games here. The Yankees coming back the way they've done. Let's see if this catch reaches over the fence. No. And going right into your living room. Down to backspin. Here's Ichiro. Boy, Jabba working out of that jam wow. in the top of the ninth inning. So big, giving the Yankees the opportunity to tie this one up. These two teammates, many a year in Seattle. Goes bunt, takes low. Two and one. First home run to puts is allowed this year. And when closers give him up, it's always the, a bad time to give one up. Series. You have to go back to 2009, the last time Mariano had a save in three straight games against one team. Chopped to short. Gregorius 
strong throw gets Ichiro. And that was uh, July 17th through 19th against the Detroit Tigers. So that's. You're right. He doesn't want to go to it three days in a row against the same club. Well, now puts will face Eduardo Nunez. Nunez finds out today he's the shortstop barring a trade until at least the All Star break with Derek Jeter having found out there's another crack close to the break that was healing in his left ankle. Nunez bunch foul and got a piece of Montero. Did, did he foul it off or did he, he just block him? I think no. he fouled it off. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, right on the kneecap. Well, the, the uh, whether it was a a butt attempt to bring in Prado. Prado stayed in the same spot to see Nunez did a nice healthy cut. Here. Yeah, you're in the territory now where, as we saw with Cervelli, you're already in scoring position. Half third last night. You, yeah. You got to think that way. Get something you can really hit well. Two and one. It must be very hard for a closer to blow a lead and still have to get these outs and not feel let down. Oh. I mean, that, that, that's his, and he's been dominant. JJ puts his. Just left a split finger. That's his out go to pitch when he's ahead. A couple fastballs split in the dirt. He just left it up for Shazelli. Hit. Pass for Gorgas and the Yankees have the winning run off. You mentioned the hole is open with Prado guarding the line, and Gregorius couldn't get this hit well by Nunez. Now the Yankees only have three stolen bases this year. They're last in the American League in steals, but one of the players who's capable of stealing a bag is on the base on it first right now. More than capable of moving himself into scoring position. And it's all going to depend on the pitcher on the mound puts because Montero's pretty quick. We told you he threw out 34% last year. It's a pretty good rate. First stolen base of the season. Time called by Overbeck. Gardner's on deck. Time you can get a pitcher's attention as much as that JJ puts is showing it, it. There's a distraction as far as making a pitch. Now, I don't know whether that's just coming from JJ puts or from the bench. Usually it's called from the bench slide step, step off, or throw overs. It's a slide step, fastball away. Well, some pitchers are comfortable with the slide step. That didn't look like much of a slide step to me. He just went through his normal delivery. You know, and the, of all the relievers, the closer is the one that is the least 
uh, desire to want to make an adjustment like that. Off the glove of puts. And we are going to extra innings. But the Yankees with a dramatic home run off the bat of Francisco Cervelli have tied the game at two. Free baseball. We go to the 10. Buckle up. And that's where we stand as we go to the 10th inning. Two eight and zero Diamondbacks, two five and two Yankees. Yankee home runs, Robinson Co. and Francisco Cervelli. And for the Diamondbacks, D.D. Gregorius and Martin Prado. So the Yankees turn it over to David Robertson here in the 10th. Four runs and four solo home runs. You see that? I've seen a lot in this game. I know. Full boot, you said, huh? Robertson worked in the first game of the series. He gave up a hit, no runs, and setting up Mariano Rivera's save. In the Yankee victory in the opening game of the series, four to two. So it'll be the top of the order, Para, Prado, and Goldschmidt. Oh. And there's a strike. We saw Para's ability to bunt. That's why you have Overbay up, in, up tight uh, near the bag. And you see Euclid. Almost on the grass at third. Oh and two. Such a good curveball David Robertson has. You saw Cervelli banging his glove on the ground, making sure that 0 2 curveball is down. It's almost as if it was it wasn't close enough to, to get the check swing. You know, that's what you're trying to get in that situation. Maybe again, they'll try it again. Well, with the fastball, missed outside, two and two.
grounded. Up the middle. Backhanded by Cano, and he will get power. You know, Cano makes his play look easy, but it really wasn't. He's going up on the backhand, short hop, gathers and throws across his body. That was not an easy play. On the money. But he made it look easy. It's not like he's even laboring. It was a short hop, tough play, kept the head down, and then the, the strong arm flipped the first base right on the money to overbay. Makes it look easy. Almost too easy. Because oh! it, it makes it look so easy, you don't really appreciate how hard the play was. The par is a decent runner, so he had to get it over there fairly quickly. Oh! And a strike. Got a little cut to his fastball tonight. Maybe two. He must, be, cut. he must have been sitting next to Mariano in the bullpen. A couple of years. <laughs> and the pitch. Oh, the breaking ball, one and two. You ever hear that when a catcher would uh, touch the ground like that if it wasn't? See how Cervelli wants a curveball that he's tapping the ground. Yeah. In other words, he, he wants it in the dirt. He wants it in the dirt, but as a hitter, can you can you feel it, see it, uh, hear it? You, you know there's some sort of movement going on back there. You don't want to look though because uh, no, but even just the tapping. Yeah. You know? That's a full blown cutter. Yeah, it is. A three mile an hour cutter. The 2 2. Missed inside, 3 and 2. Robertson deals. Backhanded by Nunez. Set. Fires in the dirt, but scooped up by Overbeck. Two outs. Overbay just saved Nunez a second error. Yeah, Overbay so smooth at first base. Settled in nice heat. The Warner Nunez has got such a strong arm. I think most of the time, if you see a middle infielder rush the throw, that's when they get off to the side of it. See him beating it by half a step. Just almost just easy throw over there. And boy, Lyle Overbay so good at first base. Saved him an error. There's a guy you have to be careful with, Paul Goldschmidt. He has the power. He is two for four. Pitch up. Really not liking that call. He set up a way, the ball ended up being inside. That's why he didn't get the call. That's right. The presentation looked like a ball. He's talking to home plate umpire Ron Culper right now. And Cano can't get there, so Goldschmidt picks up his third hit of the night. Hey, Sunday. Don't miss a new WB Mason presents the Joe Girardi show. The skipper breaks down the Yankees' first taste of interleague play this season. Plus, he'll answer your questions, which are submitted on Facebook and Twitter. The Joe Girardi Show, new Sunday at 5, only on Yes. Now that's going to bring up Miguel Montero. Montero won for four today. He doubled in the ninth inning. And that really should have been an E8. On Gardner, he ran down the drive. The left center was there and just overran it. 
but it scored a double. Montero will take it. 93 low on the count one of them. Let's look ahead to the bottom of the 10th inning for the Yankees. It'll be the top of the order. It's going to be Gardner, Wells, and Cano. Yeah, they'll be facing a new pitcher. But the left hander is all uh, warmed up, ready to go. It must be Matt Reynolds. The 1 0. There you go. It's hard to read what Culp is saying. Yeah, he, but I, he called I, it a strike. Yes, he did say strike. Yeah. He said, uh, yeah, he did. No, he didn't. <laughs> You're a pitcher, you want it. You're a hitter, you don't think it was. One one. Strike. One and two. The 28 year old from Alabama looking for the final out of the top of the 10th. Runner goes. That one is grounded left side, fielded by Euclid. And the Yankees go to the bottom of the tent, tied at two. No runs to hit. And one man left on base. Gardner will lead it off. Please. Well, let's start with the top of the third inning. D.D. Gregorius up. First pitch he sees in the big leagues this year. Boom. Home run. Gives the uh, Diamondbacks a 1-0 lead. They would add to it in the sixth inning. Martin Prado. His third home run of the year. 2-0. Then the Yankees started to find a range in the bottom half of the inning. Robinson Cano with his fifth makes it 2-1. That's where it stood to the bottom of the ninth. Francisco Cervelli. We've got a tie ball game. Cervelli's second home run of the year. That's our game recap. Nice. Now this is how it looks on the board. Two nine and zero. And two five and two. As we go to the bottom of the tenth inning. It'll be a new pitcher for the Diamondbacks and another left-hander. And we saw him in the first game, Matt Reynolds. Or Gibson has a couple lefties out of the bullpen. Tony Sip, along with Matt Reynolds, has yet to give up an earned run. Three hits, seven and third innings, six games. He's done a nice job so far for the D backs. Yankees would like Gardner on, then they could start the engines. Now they bring in the lefty to face Gardner and Cano, but the trap there is Vernon Wells in between. And that's why you stagger lefties and righties. Pitch low, 1 0. David 
Phelps. In case there's an 11. Popped up. Shallow center. And Gregorius fights it but makes the play for the first up. Over two with a couple of walks. Prado close to the line again and deep at third. Oh! And a strike from Reynolds. There, count 0 and 2. Cano on deck. Prado is so close to the line, he's almost guarding foul territory. And that's about as close as you can get. Broken back ground ball to Gregorius. Two outs. So Robinson Cano will come up with two outs. He has five home runs in his last eight games. He had a home run in the sixth inning. That got the Yankees on the board today. And before those eight games, he was three for 23 out of the gate to start the season. So he's turned it around. That looks a little like a young Java. Mm -hmm. Can I flat brim? Cano oh! seems like he likes hitting in extra innings. He's 24 for 68 with two home runs in extra innings. That's 353. He struck out with the bases loaded in the eighth. Kind of waves at that one. Oh, and two. He got hit on the back foot on the check swing, but they said he went around. And with the bases loaded, one out, he struck out. That Euclid struck out after that. As the Yankees uh, went to the ninth down 2 1. When you're down 0-2 in a count, and you, you get, you're on the defensive. You got to start fighting back. And the, taking that first pitch, it's out of the strike zone. Pitcher trying to get you chase it. That leads you in the right direction. Now it's one and two. Now you got to fight to get the count even if you can. Kind of swing it a little bit back towards your favor. There it is. Now it's two and two. Now feel a little bit more comfortable. The pitcher has to throw. You get him to the point where he has to throw a much better pitch. He doesn't want to go to three and two. I, I'm, if I'm not Reynolds here at Yankee Stadium, Robinson Cano, I'm, I'm throwing something down the way. If you want to swing, swing. Now three and two. It's a coming fastball in, but the danger of Robinson Cano in this lineup. I know these other boys in this lineup, Euclid and others can hit home run. This is your go to guy in the lineup. I think he tries to trick him here. Goes He's, with another hook. This will break the ball away. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too. He doesn't want to give in and uh, be walking off the field. Swing and a miss. And he gets Cano to work a 1 2 3 10th inning. Got a breaking ball low. We go to the 11.
two game. And David Phelps will be the Yankees fifth pitcher. Pitched well in spring training. Was actually going to be a starter. And then because the bullpen got into trouble early when the Yankees got out of the gate slow. They brought up Phil Hughes early. And that pushed David Phelps into the bullpen. He's done a nice job there. You know this is the move right here. David Phelps is in for uh, the long haul at least multiple innings. A guy that can start. You get down to this bullpen Sean Kelly uh, Adam Warren or the left. He could be the guy to give you however long it takes. So Cody Ross will start it off. Cody is one for four. Two fly balls to right, a ground ball to third, and a single to center in the ninth. It'll be Ross, Chavez, and Pollock against David Phelps. Phelps comes right after you. Count one and oh. done a nice job David Phelps you know you got a chance to start last year you go into spring training thinking you know you're got a shot to be win the fifth job you did not still you have a chance there's a lot of the swing guy long man out of the pen gets a chance to get multiple starts during the course of the year with injuries and what goes on through 162 games I see Savelli behind the plate uh, with the game tying home run in the bottom of the ninth there it must be a must be a breakout night for home runs for Yankee catchers throughout the organization. J.R. Murphy hit three home runs tonight for Trenton. Tied the franchise record. That one is drilled down the left field line. It's trouble. It's going to go to the wall. Cody Ross is in scoring position as he doubles to open up the 11th. And we saw J.R. Murphy in spring training. Three homers. Three home runs tonight. That's who the Yankees have left in the bullpen. I don't think they want to use Rivera tonight, so it's Kelly and Warren. Hey, 90 years ago today, the original Yankee Stadium opened across the street. Yankees against the Red Sox. Babe Ruth hit a home run. Why not? He built the place. <laughs> and the Yankees beat Boston 4-1. to one. He hit the first home run, right? First home run. Yeah. Chavez wants to pull the ball here. Move Ross to third. Count one and oh. 1923. April 18th. One and one. There's the old girl. Beautiful facade. And the babe. See it. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy four thousand plus in that game. Foul back. How did that happen? What do you mean? That would have helped. That would have like fifty seven. No, that's after they refurbished it. It was like sixty some odd thousand, but it, that turned out to be a fire hazard that day. They were sitting in the aisles. It was a place to be, Al. I'm sure. What well, a dig it must be packed after that game. All those <laughs> Model T's. <laughs> Horse and buggy. Runner at second. Nobody out here in the 11th inning. It's a 2 2 game. Yeah, the whole. Cat mouse game here for Phelps and Chavez. You want to try to negate his ability to get a productive out to the right side. David Phelps, a little sinker away. See Chavez trying to pull anything that's on the outer half. Be able to get a ball to roll to the right side, move up Cody Ross.
the one two he fouls the ball off to stay alive we've got bonus cantos here in the Bronx first time you've been able to say that this year for mm -hmm. Yankees first extra inning game for the Diamondbacks it's their third last year the Yankees were six and three in extra inning games That's what happens. You got a runner at second base, multiple sides. David Phelps not agreeing with Cervelli, what he's putting down. Shake, shake. Got the runner step out. Oh, okay. Now we have a little conference. I wonder if there's any confusion, not so much a disagreement. But you understand what I mean? With because the signs have Which changed. Because he's a runner at second. Well, you know, before before you throw your first pitch, I mean, you, you know what what's going to be at second. Runner at second base. What do you want to use? You ever forget? I've, no. I've heard of the pitchers and catchers forget. Missed outside. I used to do a rollover. Mm -hmm. Won't get into too many, but it would roll over after four. Yeah. So whatever the first sign was, you just went from there. So it always changed. The two-two. What does that mean, rollover? In other words, I, I had four pitches fastball, curveball, slider, change. Okay. One, two, three, four. If you started on a two, and whatever you ended on, you'd roll over at four. So if I wanted a, a slider, you started at two. It didn't matter what he was putting down, it was the, it was the pumps. So two, one, three, two, whatever. If you ended on three signs, it was a slider. Gotcha. If you ended on four signs, it was change. Count three and two. So wherever he started, then you just start from there, two, and then you go. So it was so long as you could see the first sign. Good, go, good to go. Yep. Three two. And Chavez earned that walk. That was a good at bat. Boy, he fought off some good pitches. That's a veteran at bat. Now the infield's going to talk it over. The Diamondbacks are in a bunt situation. Savelli's going to go out there as well. Like a team meeting out there. Well, this is a situation. I, I, it, it's effective if you're able to do it. A, a known bunt situation. The, the runner or the batter wants to bunt down to third base so that the third baseman has to field it. Vacate third. You got second to third. And during the time the infield was meeting, Matt Williams, third base coach, went up to speak to uh, young Mr. Pollock, and it was a verbal sign. Pollock bunts and bunch foul. Now that's a replay for the third baseman in Euclid. Anything other than a hard bunt back to Euclid, he's got to get back to third base. Any chance of getting the runner at third, keeping the runners in position for double play ball. You saw Pollock where he bunted. He bunted it towards first. And one thing to remember, over Bay is a left-handed throw, so he doesn't have to pivot right. to throw. He can just pick the ball up and throw it directly across the diamond to third base. If the bunt is too hard, get the force there. And bunts it foul. So what do the Diamondbacks do now? Do they let him bunt with two strikes? I, I think with his speed, Michael, do you, you give a shot of him swinging? I, yeah. Unless it's a two hopper right at somebody, he's got a chance of beating it out. See, but that's not the plan. The manager wanted him to get the bunt down. Would you risk bunt and foul? No, here? no. I, out? I, I think you're right. He's, he's got pretty good speed, so he'd be kind of tough to double up. Oh. <laughs> It's a punishment at bat. <laughs> you're going to bump with two strikes. And for those that are new to baseball, if you bump with two strikes and you bump foul, it's a strikeout. That's why it's a decision. It's not an easy one. And bunt 
planted in front of the plate. And they get the force at third, despite the double clutch by Cervelli, who was waiting for Euclid to get back. So they had him bunt, but it wasn't a good bunt. Just didn't get it far enough, kept it in the bunting circle. Cervelli bounces. You see, Uke slipped a little bit. Cervelli seeing the runner, knowing that he had enough time. Cody Ross out easily at third base. Double play still in order. Kirk Gibson has not shaved once in three days in New York. And each game has been a close shave for the Diamondbacks. And Cervelli meeting with Phelps almost after every batter. And here's the kid who they think so much of, D.D. Gregorius. David Phelps, he's coming up with a little cutter, throwing more of a tight cut fastball. First one cutter, that little comeback two seamer back on the inside part of the plate. Nice pitch. Rounded to first, they have just one play. They make it at first as the runners move up two away. Diamondbacks are going to go to the bench and they'll send up Eric Hinsky to pinch hit for Pennington. You mentioned the cutter. You know, you, you said that Robertson threw a cutter today. Yep. I would think that if you sat totally 162 days with a guy who whittled, you'd learn how to whittle. <laughs> so, I mean, they all should be learning how to throw the cutter. I don't know if they could all do it like Mariano, but that should be something they talk about all the time. I could, they, of course they do. And I think about, you know, the time that I spent here at 05, Tanyan Sturts. Who was a sinker slider guy? He started throwing a cutter, but no doubt. And Mariano's more than just a great closer. Talks to the pitchers. You know, how do you hold that? I mean, that's just a communication of, of a good staff. When all the pitchers talk about who they faced, what do you think? What did you see? And with Mo down there, M Michael, you're right. I mean, if you can come up and tinker with a fastball, change your grip a little bit, and get a little movement. We've seen it with David Robertson. I'm seeing it right here with David Phelps. He's throwing. That, that's not a slider. That's more of a cut fastball. All right, so now Gibson's going for it by sending up Hinsky for Pennington. Pennington tonight 0 for 4. Hinsky's had eight previous pinch hit at bats this year, and he's got three hits, including a home run. And four runs batted in as a pinch hitter this year. Rays and the Orioles were in extra innings in Baltimore. Matt Weeders with a walk-off grand slam. As the Orioles beat Tampa Bay 10-6. The Rays are now uh, at that dime store record, 5-10. and 10. Driven out to left field. Vernon Wells is there. And Phelps works out of trouble. No runs a hit and two men left. We go to the bottom of the 11th. Euclid will lead it off.
ballpark, and um, they've added some speed and um, some some defense, and they've done some different things, and they've added to their rotation. And the additions to the rotation is experienced guys. It's not a bunch of, of young kids. So I'm curious to see what they look like. He's going to find out tomorrow night, and it starts with Andy Pettit against Brandon Morrow. 6.30, it starts on yes with the pregame, right around 7.05 first pitch. Then Saturday afternoon, Hiroki Kuroda against Mark Burley. Big ERA, a Burley ERA for Mark. And then on Sunday, Ivan Nova against Josh Johnson, also a Zoftig ERA. Saturday and Sunday are 1 o'clock games. The whole weekend is on, yes, and the three of us will be there. Last year, the Yankees went 11-7 and seven against the Toronto Blue Jays. All right, so the bottom of the 11th, Keith Bell takes over, and he'll face Euclid, Bosch, and Cervelli. Fifth pitcher used by Kirk Gibson. All four runs in the game coming via the solo home run. Will that, will that be what ends it? Pitch outside. Bell signed a big free agent contract with the Marlins, and he did not do well last year, and the Marlins kind of cleaned their payroll, and they found a taker for Bell. Yeah, Bell with a 5 ERA, 19 saves and a 27 tries. You were pointing out the other day now when he came to the ball game, he still got the velocity of the fastball. Though. You know, when you think about a couple of years ago in San Diego, this is a multiple all-star guy, 42 saves, 47, 43. Comfortable at home. Grew up, lived in uh, Southern California, now in San Diego way. Base hit as they were guarding the line. And that's the gamble. So you're guarding against double. Sometimes you give up singles that would be outs. So there's the winning run on first base. As Michael's talking about, uh, nothing's going to go past him on his right, but on the left, it's a different story. Bigger gap between the third baseman and the shortstop, and that uh, gets the ball rolling for the Yankees here in the 11th inning. Yeah, but you said it, Michael. Guard, there's guarding the line and then guarding. Balls that you could catch that are eight feet foul. You know, be aware that you can handle a hot smash to your right as a third baseman, but don't stand on the line. Bosch is taking a long look at third base coach Robbie Thompson. But in certain instances, you, you're not going to ask players to do things that they're not used yeah. to doing. I, I don't know if Bosch is, I don't know if the Yankees know if he's that good a bunter. Grounded to Goldschmidt. Nice pick. He'll go to second one on the first. Not in time. So you score that 3 6 on the force. Nice pick by Goldschmidt to try to start the double play. Good hustle by Bosch. I thought that there was enough on that ball from Gregorian. Over across. Let's see. He beats it. Yeah, beats it by half a step. Mm. Wow, was that close? Maybe not even. Now here's the guy that put this game into extra innings with a one out home run in the bottom of the ninth inning. Tied the game at two. His second home run of the year. Bell deals. Oh, and one. Here it is. Hanging splitter from JJ Puts. Finds the front row out over the auxiliary scoreboard in left field and it changes the numbers on the board to two to two, and that's where we stand right now. Four solo home runs. You can see that a whole lot as the total amount of runs scored.
The 2 fights it off and fouls it off. Stayed with the fastball, all three pitches. While uh, Heath Bell throws enough velocity, hit a couple years ago, and his his velocity was more mid 90s. Over the top, kind of jumps at the hitter. He's got a big curve. Throwing in that low 90, 92 range. Bosch leads off first with one man out. Bottom of the 11th inning. Cervelli at the plate. So much concern about losing Russell Martin to free agency. But Yankee catchers have gotten off to a nice start this year. 14 for 47. That's 298. With the two home runs, both of them off the bat of Cervelli. And they've done a nice job defensively. The 0 2 high. 1 and 2. Russell with the Pirates is four for 39, I believe, going into tonight. So that's, I can calculate quickly, 103. Well, Michael, I think there's something to be said for I'll show you type players. And I think the Yankees, this is really the first time as long as I can remember, where because of the injuries and some of the players that get an opportunity, Tony Sip getting ready in the D backs bullpen. But there's a different look to him. Swing and a miss, he got him. So Cervelli down on strikes. You know, I'll, I'll prove to you, you know, it's, you mentioned Russell Martin, a big sign with the Pirates. Cervelli and Chris Stewart getting a chance. And I think, that, you know, there's some question as to how they're going to do, or, you know, in this case now, Nunez and others that are getting a chance to play. There's something refreshing about that. Here's Ichiro. 0 for 4 tonight. And with Ichiro, it's a question of when. Too much on the resume for him to continue to struggle. So when will he get the stroke? Count two and zero. Oh. You know, one thing I always look at when hitters are in a slump, you, you watch and see how they're making their outs. They're not getting hits, but uh, Ichiro, he's only hit one ball kind of hard tonight. That was the line out to first base, so he's not really showing signs that he's getting his timing down, hitting the ball hard. Even if they're still catching him, that's a look, sometimes an indication that you're coming out of your your slumps. Seven for forty-one on the year. And now he is 8 for 42. Bosch will round second. I'll stop right there. So a base hit for Ichiro. And the winning run is in scoring position for the Yanks. Maybe this is a sign that things are starting to come together. Second time he's hit the ball hard tonight. This one will sneak past uh, Pennington and on into the outfield for a base hit. There's the style at the... Uh, is not used by any other hitter but him. And it works this time for a single to center field. Kind of gliding to the ball. So now a chance for Eduardo Nunez to be the hero. Outfielders have moved up. They want to have a play at the plate. Case of the base hit in their direction. 
Yankees found out today their captain and shortstop Derek Jeter is going to be out until at least the All-Star break. An opportunity for Eduardo Nunez to put his imprint on this team. And he takes outside 1-0. and This is his chance. This is his chance to show people in baseball he could be an everyday shortstop. It's his chance to show the Yankees that I'm your guy when Derek Jeter is not here. He's one for four tonight. One and one. Just another one of those I'll show you players. Uh, I'm with you, Michael. This is a chance for Eduardo Nunez and others that have assembled on this uh, team that have made it interesting early on as the Yankees have been playing good baseball, especially these last eight games. Bosch is at second. He is the winning run. Each rows at first. Two men out. Bottom of the 11. 2 2 game. One. A little late on that. Lines it foul. One and two. Bell's throwing harder now than he did all of last year. And it jumps up on the hitters, Michael. He, he's got like this little leg kick and then he kind of pushes off his backside and it, it gets up on the hitters, no doubt about it. As you said, last year he was low 90, upper 80. Check swing, did he go? No. Said Guccione. A lot of twos on the board. You tell whether or not he swung. He looked like he might have. Diamondbacks two, Yankees two, two runners on, two balls, two strikes, two outs. Line to right field, and that ball is going to be caught. Cody Ross ran it down, and we go to the 12th. So Nunez hit the ball hard, kind of took off on Ross, but he was there. Nunez cannot believe it. We're going to the 12th inning. Of this series, they've taken the first two games, 4-2, 4-3. Now it's 2-2. And in the 12th, David Phelps, the Yankees' fifth pitcher tonight, will face the top of the Diamondback order. So both teams had a chance to push a run across in the 11th. Couldn't get the big hit. Now Gerardo Parra, 0 for 5 tonight, will dig in. If you just joined us, don't know where you've been, but <laughs> four runs on four home runs, four solo shots, and that's where we are. Oh. And a strike. 
Overbay creeping in at first. Parra has good speed. We've seen him drag bunt in this series already. No bunt there as he crushes one to right field. He throws back and it's over his head and goes up against the scoreboard. Gardner scrambles after it, gets the carom and fires in a leadoff double for Parra. Good job of Gardner backing up and uh, holding par to the two base hit. Because Ichiro was uh, up against the wall with the wall and the ball went by him for a second time. The futile leap just over the glove. The ball's going the other way. But Gardner hustles over and holds Parra to a double. Just out of his reach. Looked like he had a, a chance to make the play. Couldn't do so. So Phelps and Euclid talking things over with Prado up. Prado, a very dangerous hitter in the clutch. He has one of those four home runs today. Now the runner's already in scoring position, and Prado is such a good hitter, so it doesn't figure they'll bunt. Although the Yankees playing in at the corners, but not all the way in. Then the wheel play on and try to get Parra sleeping. Nothing doing. The whole idea is for the runner to see the shortstop running towards third base, thinking he has a chance to get a bigger lead. Then the second baseman sneaks in behind him and uh, trying to pick him off. Timing off just a little bit. Paro wasn't even set with his secondary lead. Another second would allow Paro to maybe take another step. Prado takes low, 1 0. No sign of him showing a, a bunt there. He took, he's taking it all the way. Well, they're definitely, the Yankees think there's something could be on. Trying to keep Euclid at third if that bunt is down the third base line. I think the Diamondbacks feeling that Prado is such a good hitter, he can hit the ball the other way, maybe get himself a base hit in the process. Now let's see what they put on. He's fouled the first pitch off for a strike. So basically if he's going to bunt they're, they're going to give him one more strike to do it with. Oh. Good pitch yeah. in on the hands. It was it keeps him from hitting the ball the other way. A little late run inside corner. See that little tail? Only Prado thought it was a strike. Well, let's put it this way it makes it more difficult to hit the ball the other way. Got to really work it, force it, push it. One two. Good fastball there. Two and two. And the pitch. Driven deep to left center field. Giving chases Gardner. And he'll make the play on the warning track. Parra tags and goes to third. Prado gave it a ride. And he cannot believe that stayed in the ballpark. Not in Phoenix anymore. Opened up. You saw his front hip. He almost stepped out on that ball driven to the deep part of this ballpark. As good as that buck. Sacrifice fly. Moving Parra to third base. Gardner getting a little slide there. Well, the Yankees have to bring the infield in with a runner on third. With one out. 
Here's Goldschmidt. And oh. there's a strike. Howard dives back to third. one oh and two I think the Yankees are again I think there's catchers interference huh. well, you are right it, it, another error on Cervelli in other words he's reaching for the ball too quickly did it with the uh, DJ Gregorius yeah. up that wasn't quite as severe as the last one but you saw Goldsmith look back right away and Cervelli's trying to act like nothing happened. All right, so the Yankees now will back up at short and second to play for the double play. Same situation earlier with Montero at third. They didn't back up. That's right, AJ Pollock, who is a much better runner than Montero. They were playing medium depth in the middle of the infield. Montero to load the bases. Well, Michael, you said this was an unusual game. Some unusual things happened. And it's continuing. First of all, the second catcher's interference, which goes as an arrow in Cervelli. He's got two errors tonight. Now that Montero's hit by a pitch to load the bases. Phelps usually has pretty good control. Today he's all around. Certainly not pinpointing the corners. And that's going to bring up Cody Ross with the bases loaded. Well, for David Phelps, you're thinking your ground ball pitch. Anything that's down in the zone obviously is hard to elevate in the air. Cody Ross wants a pitch like that up in the zone. He's just trying to get a long fly ball. Phelps got good action. When he's on top of his, his fastball, he's got sink to it. Line drive left field coming on Wells. He'll have the plane on a hop. He throws to third, can't get the force, run scores, and the Diamondbacks lead three to two. Cody Ross has had himself a, a heck of a series. He has seven hits in this series. Here's a guy who's just coming off the disabled list. He hasn't had much action. But he turns on this fastball, kind of up and in, and drills it into left field. His last three times up, he's had hits. A single, a double, and now another single. And this one gives the Diamondbacks the lead. There's a short, quick stroke. That ball was up enough for Cody Ross to get it out there in front of Vernon Wells. That one is driven out to right center field. Long run for Gardner. He's not going to make the play. It's up against the wall. That will clear the bases. So Eric Chavez comes back to the Bronx and a big hit that breaks this one open as the Diamondbacks now lead six to two.
Wow, happened so quickly. Let's see the pitch. Sinker up. Anytime a sinking fastball is belt high, it's not a good sign. Chavez get the good part of the barrel on the bat. Gardner off the wall, base of the ball. Good view from Cody Ross getting that angle on that being oh. able to score from first base. That's going to bring up Pollock, who takes a strike. Chavez first extra base hit of the year. So Phelps came on in the 11th, worked the scoreless inning, and now has given up four runs here in the 12th. And that is going to do it for Pollock as he strikes out. Andy Owan. And that just missed the young shortstop. It's quick, not only in the field, but at the, in the batter's box as well. Watch this pitch. I don't know. It looked like it went right through him almost. Put him in the spin cycle. Runner at second, two outs. And the one two. Inside again, two and two. This is a night Gregorius will not forget. First big league home run. On the first pitch he saw as a diamond bat. This one he saw right into the glove of Cervelli. Staying alive. Every other game in baseball is over. Waiting on this one to go into the books. 2 2. Strike three. Gregorius down looking. But the Yankees now, as they go to the bottom of the 12th, are looking at a four-run deficit. Can they make it up? They're trailing this one 6-2. to two.
thing, but that was just making up a one run deficit. Now they're down six to two with the Diamondback desperate to get out of Dodge with one win. So they're going to turn it over to Tony Sip. And this will be Sip's ninth game, and he is going to face Overbay, Gardner, and Wells. Former Cleveland Indian reliever, now making his ninth appearance of the year out of Clemson University. Actually played some outfield at Clemson, then also was a, a pitcher. Really? Yeah. I wouldn't kid you. Another one of those athletic pitchers. Was he on the uh, the team with your son? No, he's. Uh, Justin was there before him. So here is Overbay against Sip. Pitch is high. Yankees need base runners. Is there any part, Ken, when you're when it's a tie ball game as we just saw, that you get up there and you want to be the hero, hit the home run, and now you can't hit a four-run home run, so you're just thinking about keep the line moving. Well, the whole deal now is, as Michael said, you need base runners. Just, just to make it interesting. See how interesting you can make it. Just keep getting put men on base, men on base, and the whole thing is to try and bring the tying run to the plate. Give yourself the opportunity. No, but I, I ask you before as, that. Yeah, as a as a, a you know all star guy that you were when it's a two two game or six six game or five five. Yeah, you, you're stepping up there reading the headlines, but you know you got to get a pitch to hit to do it. You know you're not trying to hit a pitch that's uh, down and away out of the ballpark. It just can't be done. But does it change the mindset now, being down by four as well, opposed to two two? Well, of course you do. You just you're just trying to get on base any way you can. And Overbay goes down on strikes. I say that because how often do you see a game and this wasn't one of them because the four runs were a result of four solo home runs but you know it's a fairly high scoring game and then all of a sudden you know seven eight innings of extra inning baseball and nobody scores and you're thinking you know you're, you're thinking if I get a pitch you know and a lot of times the situation will dictate what happens to you I always felt it was good to have a power hitter leading off an inning in the tight ball game and you saw it tonight with the two of the home runs are lead off homers. The ones that Hughes oh. gave up. It's primarily because pitchers do not want to walk the first hitter of the inning. And usually one of those first three pitchers is going to get something you can lean on. Yeah, we saw Eddie Murray here the other night. Mm -hmm. That's the guy we wanted up leading off an inning in a tie game. Because they, they they were in a situation where they couldn't walk him, and uh, I saw him hit a 3-0 pitch, leading off an inning out of the ballpark to win the game in extra innings. Because the pitcher thought he was taken all the way, and the manager turned him loose. Girls said, "Go ahead." Sure enough, balls out of the ballpark. We're going home. Diamondback six runs, 13 hits. Yankees two runs on seven hits and three errors. Count three and one. Leading base runners, Gardner should be taken here.
3-1 pitch. A strike three and two. Hardy few remaining here at the ballpark. As Gardner hits a high fly ball to the right side. And the catch is made for the second out by Josh Wilson. So the Yankees down to their final out. Vernon Wells today has walked twice, 0 for 3 with the two walks. I want to know. Yeah, I know when the, this series is completed, the Yankees lose this game, and it appears they are going to do so. They still want two out of three in the series, and that's a good thing. But you had the chance to go for the sweep. You know, I did. I think back to the '98 team, and I think Michael would agree with me. Every time they got the the situation where they could sweep somebody, they got it done. Oh. Right. That's how they won all those games that year. And, and not to say that, uh, you know, Dimebacks have a pretty good team. The young pitcher tonight, Pat Corbin, was, he was pretty darn good. The 1 1. 1 and 2. You, know, you, you win the first two games of the series and you think of oh, well, we're playing with house money which is, which is kind of true but you know maybe you want the whole block instead of just the house you know a couple of condos <laughs> well, how about that Rudy Giuliani hanging in there in the 12th inning see a lot of politicians or celebrities go to games and if the game takes forever, they're gone, but he is still at the ballpark. They kind of showed us all how to hang in there, didn't they? Yep. Here's the 2 2. Still 2 and 2. You know, Wells at the plate now. I, I didn't like to be the last out of the game. I was doing everything I can to move it on to the next guy. Fowler pitches off, trying to get on any way I could. Eric Chavez with a bases loaded double. Broke this one open. Made a 3 2 game, a 6 2 game. And David Phelps, unless the Yankees rally, is going to get the loss here. That one is driven out to deep left center field. But Parra is there and he will make the play. And that's it. As the Yankees lose this one 6 to 2 in 12 innings. The Diamondbacks salvage the final game of this three game set. They'll head to Colorado. The Yankees head to Toronto. We'll head to a break, but be right back. <laughs> 